The following presentation does not represent Australian opinion or intellect. We do not speak for any religious order or ethnic minority. We are not political scientists or uni graduates. We are insignificant upper lower class scum, comparing notes and airing grievances. It's just our opinion. Deal with it. No way that the GST will ever be part of our policy. Never ever. Never ever. It's dead. It is a big idea. By 1990, no Australian child will be living in poverty. You should show us. I'm serious. I'm not pushing it. That house boy line. When did we say it? I reckon it was in the States. Was it? Yeah. Are you a houseboy, You're right? right? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Was it from a song? No. A from movie? a movie? Yeah. I don't know, man, but we said it all the way through the States. Oh, you a houseboy, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 but why? I, I'm... It's, <laughs> it's going to do my head in now. Cause yeah. It, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I know we'll, we started saying it, but... Yeah. I hate that when you have something like that you can't think uh, of. No, you don't understand. No, this was like seven years ago, six, seven years uh, ago. Yeah. It's going to be hard to connect. Like a houseboy is like... Um, like like the help, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, but was it when we were talking about someone being a bitch or someone whipped? I don't even remember. Yeah, it was, was something like that. God, it was something every like two that. seconds, man. It's like, oh, you a houseboy, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, fine. Fuck. Hey, did you see um Trump's response on that Charlotte thing? Yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, you know what someone said? Someone pretty said al- it seemed pretty eloquent. Yeah, but eloquent. Some- Get yeah. fucked, dude. Someone said so. He outcasts Muslims, outcasts everyone. And, but but he said, oh, not everyone is a neo-Nazi. Yeah. He said, stop the hatred on both sides. Racism is ugly. Yeah, but he he waited three days, whatever, until he actually denounced, uh, not denounced, but he... Condemned. Condemned. The attack. The, the neo-Nazis. White. Yeah. Because David Duke came out. David Duke was the founder of the, the yeah. clan, like in the modern era. And um, he came out and said, we're the ones that put you in power. Mm. And you, you're like... You're stabbing us in now the Now you're turning your back on yeah. us, yeah. Literally. And he waited that long before he condemned it. And I, I saw a report today on, uh, like, I was reading one of his mm. um, press conferences. Like, he, he did, like, a press yeah. conference. And he said, um, I was waiting till I got all the facts. Yeah. It's like, dude. What facts? What facts? <laughs> well, neo-Nazis uh. and Klansmen. Yeah. What, what facts were you waiting for? The and Klansman then, guy came out and said, we put you in power. We, yeah, we yeah, supported yeah. you. Yeah, pretty, what more do you want? People were holding flags. Pretty clear cut. <laughs> They were holding flags with swastikas and f- like. And not just that, the burning arm um, sticks. Yeah, the tiki torch. Yeah. Did you? Oh, did it, you it, see Michael Rappaport's response on that? Yeah, yeah, I did. You sent it in the thing. <laughs> it was all about pulling down that statue, right? Of the the war, um, the, the guy from uh, General. Uh, what's his name? One of the generals the from the Confederate yeah. General Lee. Confederate, yeah, General Lee. Yeah, yeah. The 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 grey, the leader of the grey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Dude, that Michael Rappaport clip, I want to play it just because I want us to have it on record so whenever I listen to the episode back again, I can hear it. Because <laughs> it made me laugh. Yeah. It was everything that I was thinking, man. He like, just said it. <laughs> Michael Rappaport. He's a sick cunt. He's a mad actor. He was in, um, what's it called? Uh, Friday or whatever, right? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, next Friday. Yeah, you're right. He was in next Friday. He's, um, thing in, hang on. Is it- how many fucking videos? This guy's busy, man. <laughs> he's, no, he's on fire. Yeah, nah. He was in um that the best movie ever uh with Ice Cube, uh, Ice Cube and Omar Reps, uh Higher Learning. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it. You haven't seen Higher Learning, <laughs> dude. So. If there's one movie that you should watch, uh, John John Singleton did it. Tupac was meant to be in Higher Learning, and then because he had beef with the director, they put in Omar Reps instead. Mm-hmm. And uh, Buster Rhymes is in it. Like, there's a whole bunch of good actors in that man. Basically, it's about it centers in on like, you know, three, four different college kids all go off to college and there's a big segregation at the college. Mm-hmm. Omar Reps is like a track star mm. that's on a scholarship. Um, you know, there's a girl that's like this typical sort of white, lonely, gets, you know, like lost, all that sort of shit. Michael Rappaport plays a guy that is there like on his own, like he's from a farm sort of thing and he's going to be bullied. He's like just isolated and then he just gets befriended by these neo-Nazis. Like, they come to his aid, sort of thing. Like, not even his aid. They just befriend him and say to him, look, you ever want help? You ever want to hang out? Like, you know, we're here. Sounds like a prison story or and something. And just gets indoctrinated into <laughs> yeah. the neo-Nazi yeah. side. Like, it's, it's a sick movie. It's an cool. amazing movie. It's, yeah, it's moving as fuck, man. you got to watch it. But the not irony the irony of it is, is that nearly all the actors that played the neo-Nazis are all Jewish. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. That's, the, that's the big irony of it. You know what I mean? And the idiots, I mean, like, with this Michael Rappaport video, all these idiots are like, yeah, he played a neo-Nazi, blah, blah, blah. How fucking stupid is this video then? Like, what's he talking about? It's like, dude, he's an actor. Like, you're blurring the light. Like, he's an actor. Actor. Yeah. He, it, was, it was a Norton, role. Edward Norton a... played a neo-Nazi. It doesn't mean he's a fucking Nazi. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dumb cunts. Anyway, the, this Michael Rappaport video was everything that I was thinking. <laughs> it's just funny, man. Like, the cunts fuck. Last night in Charlottesville, Virginia, a bunch of white nationalists carrying tiki torches that they got from Home Depot wearing skinny jeans, drinking coffee, came out for a protest saying, White Lives Matter! White Lives Matter! You know your life ain't shit if you're a college student on a Friday night during the summertime. You ain't getting no ass, and you decide to come out for a protest carrying tiki torches, talking shit, little coffee cup carrying white nationalists. You ain't shit. If you was really trying to get it popping, you would have taken your little Ed Sheeran protest right over there to Virginia Beach or Newport News, and you would have got your tiki torches stuffed up your ass. Revenge of the nerd protesters. Eat some pizza, take a few bong rips. Don't you got a fucking toga party to go to? It's Friday night. Try to get to second base with a girl, you fucking loser. Talking about white lives matter, white lives matter. Throwing up Nazi salutes. Dorm room dumb fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the photos of them? They Dude. look like the big... Yeah, there was some footage I watched last night. Like, yeah, just walk, marching through the streets Dude, or whatever. Tiki torches. Uh. Like, you remember what the original clan were, man? Mm. Like, just fucking bits of ply and shit. Yeah. Fire. These guys like, went to Home Depot. They went to Bunnings and bought tiki torches <laughs> to look aggressive. And then you see the photos of them. They got, like, the fucking polo shirts <laughs> with the slick hair. <laughs> Not hard at all. No, man. It's uh. like white lives matter. You fucking idiots. I think all lives matter, right? Yeah, all yeah. lives matter. All lives matter. Do you know what the, um, do you know what they were arguing about? Like, because of the removal of the statue. Mm. And then they were saying how they don't want their European heritage, like, tarnished. Tarnished or, like, liquidated because they're going to be a minority. Same thing that that fucking, what was that idiot's name? Jared, uh, Jared. Taylor or something? Jerry Taylor, yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. I can't, uh, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. Same thing that he said. Like, we're at risk of losing our you know, European heritage. Our identity. You don't even know what you are. Like, oh, half of you cunts. Like, do, does he know his ancestry? I doubt no. it. You see these fucking rednecks with their polo shirts, man, trying to look hard. Like, take him to Harlem and see what happens. Take him to Compton. Yeah. <laughs> cunts with like, white lives matter. But that's a stupid thing. Like, there's probably a mix of all sorts of stuff in those guys. Like, yeah. you know, like, what are you, some purebred? Like, it just, it's yeah, like, they're all sh- Aryan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, I saw one of the funniest fucking Instas or tweets or whatever, and it was literally a picture of... It was an amalgamation of, like, a swastika, a black Confederate flag, and a United States flag of the United States. A mashup. Yeah. A mashup up like flag. Three, you know, like, a half fl- American flag with a swastika on the side. It was yeah. fucked up. Yeah. And someone had written, like, you can't be a patriotic American and be a Nazi. Like, there was a war about it. Yeah. You literally yeah. had a war about it. Uh, yeah. And I was thinking the same thing about the Aussies, like the Rise, uh, Rise Up Australia, whatever, mm-hmm. they're trying to align themselves with Adolf Hitler shit. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, Australia went to war against Nazi Germany. Mm. How can you be a patriotic Australian, mm. but be a Nazi? Yeah. They're stupid. We, we, we hated him. Yeah. yeah. He was a horrible man. Yeah. Like, yeah. we went to war against him as a nation. Yeah, it's such but a dumb mentality. Going, yeah, fucking hail Hitler and all this yeah, shit. Yeah. It's like, um... You did, did, did you, I think your wires are crossed, mate. Yeah. It, like, some know what... It just shows how dumb they really are. Like, yeah. They're just idiots. That's just fuck. a pack of idiots. <laughs> it's fucked up. I don't uh. know. Like, I, I looked at it, and then Trump came out and he said there was... Both sides were to blame. Mm-hmm. It's like there was a side protesting against the removal of a fucking statue. Then anti-protesters went down. Then the protesters got violent. And then one of them drove a fucking car through the crowd. Yeah. Mm. And killed a woman. Killed a woman. Just plowed into a bunch of people. That was yeah. horrifying. Yeah. And then they came out saying it was a moral victory. Dude, your moral victory came from the death of an innocent woman. Yeah. White woman. A white, an innocent white woman that was doing nothing wrong. Yeah. Counter-protesting. And that's a moral victory for your cause. Well done. It shits me. And they kept saying about how their numbers are growing and there's going to be... It's like, dude, you cunts are fucked. Like, the world looks at it now and just thinks you cunts are fucked. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. know, man. Not helping uh, your cause. America's turning to goddamn shit, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, like, going down yeah. to shit. Those scenes on the streets, yeah. like... Just, it was really oh, bad. Man. It was really bad. Did you see the um the doco on the LA riots? It was a couple of nights ago. Ah, on TV. I've seen I've seen stuff on the LA riots. Yeah, yeah. I've but, seen yeah. I've seen stuff on the LA yeah. riots, but this is a full fledged doco, like goes for an hour and a half no. or whatever. And it was unseen footage that I hadn't seen before either. Yeah. LA riots were fucked. Like they were fucked. Like I think we talked about it in yeah. brief, like before. Yeah, on an early episode. Yeah, yeah. But it started with the Rodney King thing, and then the uh, 
What was her name? Letitia Harland? The, the, is it, was that her name? Harland. The girl that got shot with the, the Korean grocery store. Yes, I think so, yeah, yeah. Harland. Let me have a quick look. It was something Harland's. I keep forgetting her first name. It starts with an L. Tupac talked about her in a song. I think Ice Cube talked about her. Basically. Harland, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Harland. Yeah. Um, this girl, right, this was like, these were all the setups for the LA riots to like click over. Mm-hmm. She was in a grocery store, in a Korean grocery store, and Koreatown in LA is like pretty segregated and, it's been there forever, since the Korean War, and there was like an influx of immigrants, like the way, you know, the Greeks came to Melbourne. And um, the store owner accused the girl of stealing like an orange juice, mm-hmm. like she'd put it in a bag and then walked up to the counter to pay for it, and then she started, like she accused her of like shoplifting, there was an argument, whatever, so she's thrown the, the orange mm. juice at her, like you fucking take it, you know what I mean? Thrown it at her, and she's turned around to walk away, and the store owner put out a gun, shot her in the back of the head. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> she was 15. Yeah. Whoa. It like yeah, Tupac, like all rappers talk about her, like, you know, she gets mentioned in songs. And it was like and do you know what happened to that woman? She got off. She she tell you what she got. Yeah, she got fuck all. She got fined five hundred dollars. Oh, it was a right? woman that shot her. Yeah. yeah. Got her okay. Fined five hundred dollars, sentenced to five years of probation and four hundred hours of community service, but no prison time. Yeah. Got off lightly. <laughs> shooting a girl in the back of the head. And she was walking away. Over nothing. She did nothing wrong. She went to she, yeah, she, she went to the counter to pay for the juice or whatever yeah. it was. No shit. <laughs> See, this was ninety two, man. It's not that like you know, ninety two. Mm. And then um after that, so like the black community was already like losing it, like this is in LA. And then o- and then Rodney King gets beaten to death by like, you know, three white guys with billy clubs. Mm. Footage of it. Footage. And the black community were like, finally, you know, we have footage of this shit. It's been gone Some, on Someone's going to pay. Yeah, it's been going on for 20, 30, 40 years, like, since the, the first LA riots, you know, in the 40s or 50s or whenever it was. And it's like, finally, like, justice. Then they get off. Like, they got nothing. They literally got nothing, man. They, it was, everything was acquitted. Like, it was a joke. Then that was it. It's like... and Let's take to the streets. Yeah, and everyone was just like, if you if we can't get justice for this, then... What justice do we have? Like, it's not right. Yeah. And then, that's it, man. The riots just started. Take matters into their own hands. It was fucked. Did the, the, the riots went... It was like spot fires and everything, right? Like, just crazy, crazy, crazy there. scenes, yeah. To this day, it's like the biggest, um, uh, like, damage done by civil sort of unrest, in, like, in LA. It was like something billion dollars. I can't remember what yeah. it was. <clears throat> if you see the overhead... And that's the thing. They the, There's the famous guy, that the, the, the one famous guy that got clubbed to death pulled out of his truck, basically at the corner of, like, Crenshaw and, like, in the heart of Compton, mm-hmm. Englewood, Watts, like, all those areas. Englewood? Yeah. It was just a no-go <laughs> zone. Dude, fireys weren't going there. Coppers were getting yeah. told to stay out of there. It was just a, like, any car that pulled over... No-go zone, mate. Yeah, let them be. Any car that yeah. went through, if the driver was white, they were just getting pulled out and beaten, man. Uh. And, like, 50 people got killed. But the one, got, the one famous incident was the guy that got dragged out of the truck, just panelled, like, for no reason, got stomped on, kicked to death, eventually ca- crawled back into his truck and then got pulled out again. Like, he was fucked. Like, if you see him, mm. he was fucked. Got pulled out again, stomped on, and then a couple of black guys came to his aid, like, a, you know, to water everyone off. Mm-hmm. And he barely survived. Like, he was fucked up. And then from there, <sighs> it just spread into, like, um, Koreatown. Mm. And he always really... It was interesting, man, because this was really... Um, like, the famous photos, if you look up Koreatown LA riots... There's a really famous photo of these two Korean dudes up on their buildings because they all just took arms and said, fuck this, we have a right to protect our stores, which they do, like in the amendment, like right to bear arms and... Protect your last, shit. Yeah, last possible defense thing, uh-huh. you have a right to, to protect your, your yeah. property. That one? Yeah. And there's <laughs> another one of two guys on a roof. Um, <laughs> that's it, yeah. These two dudes, yeah? <laughs> oh, two, like, nerdy Asian Every, dudes. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone didn't ridicule them, but, like, took note of it, like, oh, yeah, they look like two geeky nerdy. Sort of dudes. This guy's got a but smoke the, hanging yeah, out, dude, mate, the, the truth, ladies' gun. The truth is, this is what the, the truth was, that most people didn't realise, like, Americans didn't realise, Koreans had to serve in the army. There was a conscription between the ages of 18 to 35. You so had they to knew. So they're hard and they, fight, they knew man. how to handle firearms, man. They'd all been in the war or had military service yeah. by that point. Not novices. So these guys, like, if you see them, like shooting at like either looters or whatever, they've t- got the right stance. They're using army codes like to yeah. signal each other. And you literally exactly like twenty four hour watch on their properties, man. Mm-hmm. It was insane. It was really weird, man. Like because I was watching the footage and then I, I looked into it again. Like I looked into this years ago. Yeah, you know? L.A. riots is something. Do you remember the L.A. riots? Mm, vaguely, yeah. 
I remember being, you know, what, like eight years old, seven years old. I remember turning the TV on and just seeing... Oh, my God. Yeah, like fires, like all that sort of shit. That, I don't want to watch a documentary. That's pretty cool, dude, man. watch it. I'm telling you. That and um, the Iraqi invasion, man, like uh, mm. Operation Desert Storm. I remember seeing that on TV. That's probably like one of my first memories of like some... I remember that as well, man. That was really shocking to me, the, yeah. the Desert Storm. Yeah. Just watching them. Because we were like seven, eight years old, so we were just coming to age of like being aware of what's going on around us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, the LA riots, I remember them like almost crystal clear. Ingrained into your yeah, memory. seeing that footage. Burnt like, into your memory. Koreans and like the... the or just chaos. And to the National Guard had to be called in, man. And then there was criticism that... The National Guard, like, they, they were deployed without ammunition, so it was delayed. The Koreans said they got a bad rap because there were no cops coming. Like, the rest of the city was on fire, but there were no cops coming to Koreatown to, to do anything. Like, mm. it was just like, nah, like, no one's going there. Like, mm. it's, it's fucked. And then they showed shots of, like, outside of LA. So you're looking at, like, Englewood and Compton. Then you're looking at, and South Central. Then you're looking at, like, Beverly Hills on the other side, and there's, like, nothing. You know, it's just, just all nice, quiet, yeah. quiet streets. Compton, South Central, just gone up in flames. <laughs> Beverly Hills is just, yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's stress. Yeah. Do you know how fucking Rodney King died? How he died? Yeah. yeah. Um, he died, like, five years ago yeah. or something. Fuck. He fucking drowned, yeah. right, in the swimming pool. But in his body, Right, let me tell you what he had in his body. Alcohol, cocaine, marijuana, and PCP. Good mix. Yeah, That'll do it to you. Mm. The thing is, like, Rodney King wasn't a saint before, No, like, what happened. He'd been in for, you know, I can't remember what, a robbery, I, I got no idea, drug mm. offences, shit like that. Mm -hmm. And it was off his head when he was speeding. Like, you know, do you remember American History X? Yeah, love when that having movie. dinner with Elliot Gould. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Elliot Gould. Yeah, yeah it caused him a shot, like... Yeah, the Jewish guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Edward Norton had a, didn't have a good point, but he made a point of saying how, like, Rodney King was off his head and attacked police. And, poli like, his whole thing was police were using justified force. It was kind of warranted in yeah, a way. it was warranted. Like, what do you want him to do? Like, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And Rodney King wasn't, yeah, a saint, but at the same time, he didn't deserve to be just billy clubbed and kicked yeah, in the no. back of the head. Yeah. Like, repeatedly. If you saw, <laughs> do you remember that, that footage is ingrained like that. Yeah. I can see it in my head right now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I know exactly what, I, motion by motion, man. Yeah. yeah. It's just that guy just fucking just clubbing him. swinging, man. Yeah, beating by beating. Swinging yeah. like he's hitting a T-ball, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, just yeah. going for the, the bleachers. Ugh. It's fucked. And then kicks him in the back. Yeah. To get him on the ground. Then they're beating him when he's on the ground. It's like, dude, the guy's out of it. Like, like I'm pretty sure you can just <laughs> Stop, him stop. He's already dead. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. He's literally dead. He's already it's dead. <laughs> yeah, riots are so scary. You get that pack mentality and people just feed off each other and it just escalates and escalates. Yeah, and adrenaline, testosterone starts hitting and everyone just starts stealing it. TVs. Yeah, let's loot. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. People always loot, don't they? Man, it's, it's a perfect chance. It's just an excuse, yeah, yeah. Just to just start going nuts. You always want that 50 inch flat screen, and boom, I can get it now. Dude, see, all these, <laughs> you know what's funny? All these people are going for like TVs and stuff. Mate, I'd hear straight for the till. Like, what is wrong? Why is still a TV? Go for the till. Mm. Get a truck. Get a, get all those things that you can sell cheap, like toilet paper and soap. <laughs> you get rid of razor blades. Like, dude, <laughs> shavers cost twenty bucks a pack. Yeah, three dollars each. Take them. Uh, like, uh, money. Uh, a smart, a smart looter. <laughs> Set up a sign in front of your house. Cost low. <laughs> no, cost low. <laughs> cost low. <laughs> cost low. <laughs> crazy dims. Crazy, crazy dim sale. <laughs> crazy dims low low <laughs> prices. <laughs> all these cunts. Are, all these cunts are running down the street with big screen TVs. I'm just kicking back with like razor blades. New products. And Inside the front, cash only. Yeah. Tampons, <laughs> tampons, and yeah. fucking soap. soap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Uh, Hijacked ziggy. Uh. Washing detergent. <laughs> washing detergent. Do you know how expensive washing detergent is? Very. Yeah, Dim, what do you have here? Oh, I've got a little bit of Omo. Yeah, man. Got some cold power. Dude, a, a box of Omo. Uh, no, like the cold power, yeah? It's costing like 15, my, 20 bucks. My mum will call me up and say, hey, washing powder's on special. I go, uh, buy it. Go get it. When I go there, she'll give me a box. I'm like, yeah. I don't want it. She goes, it was on special. La, la, la. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, two for one. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, boxes are 25 bucks. Yeah. To wash your clothes. Yeah. Soap. Yeah. Man, this morning. Just a bunch of chemicals. When I was leaving the house, I set the washing machine to go, like, to start up, so when I get home, I'll hang out the washing. And I looked in the soap tin, and it was almost out. I'm like, "Fuck, I gotta buy fucking soap powder now!" Like it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the kitchen, and I was filling in the um, what's uh, I was loading the dishwasher. In the back of my head, I said, "Fuck, I gotta buy dishwashing powder as well." Like, man, this is gonna <clears throat> this is a nice fifty broken. <laughs> Opened the, the the cupboard door under the sink, and saw a fresh 
uh, dishwashing powder thing. Uh, like, yes. Dude, the weight just lifted off my shoulders. I was happy. I swear to God. I just went, uh, oh, thank God I bought some. Because uh, I'm happy. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Dude, I'm not even joking. You can always make your own, like, vinegar and, like, bicarb soda, I think, or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's what, that's what I've heard. Poppy's, Poppy's homebrew. <laughs> You'd be that guy. You'd, you'd see your little girls looking at you like, Dad, where's the soap? Don't worry about soap, sweetheart. We've got I've vinegar. I've got you sorted. Vinegar and bicarb soda. My clothes smell funny. No, they don't. <laughs> why is my skin burning? Yeah. All your clothes are yellow. <laughs> oh, God. No. Do you know why? Because of the um, root canal. Not tight, but like as in I've been monitoring everything that I spend. I don't just buy random shit anymore yeah. at all. Yeah. So I've been watching the credit card and it's been staying at like the balance. I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, wow. <laughs> and then I just thought, dude, I went, the last shopping thing was literally the last one after I got paid a week after the, the first prep mm. of the root canal. And I'm like, okay, I just need to buy the essentials that I need to fucking buy. Like, what am I buying? Dude, I, I seriously bought like washing powder. Some butter, some milk. It was like forty something dollars. Yeah. Uh, like, are you kidding? Like, one, this... one little bag. Dude, this was the cheap shop. This was me buying just purely what I needed. Yeah. To you're, still get gonna get, you're still going to get rammed either way. Forty something bucks. Yeah. You're fucked. Yeah, man. You, you're probably better off getting a Costco card, man, and just getting bulk. Yeah, I was thinking about that, but because it's only me, I can't really buy bulk. No, no, no. I, I like, talked to my mum like about washing it. powders and stuff like yeah, that. I talked to my mum about it. A, a Costco. Membership is like 50, 60 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can get two cards issued, and the fuel at Costco is always cheaper. Yeah. It's always like 10 And there's one in Marabba now, which yeah. is close to you. It's, but that's the thing. I don't. Go- I think mum was saying if you don't have a membership, you have to like pay a down payment and you yeah, get a yeah, pack at the end. Like a fee. That's yeah. weird. You pay, you pay a fee. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you pay like an access fee. But if, you f- if I filled up my car at Costco uh, twice, I think, twice or three times, mm-hmm. I would basically earn the membership back. Like it'd pay for yeah. itself. But they have fuel bowsers. You haven't yeah, seen man. them. Nah. Dude, Costco fuel is always cheap. It's at least ten cents cheaper. And it's always just petrol. It's normal petrol, man. Yeah, it's it's, there's fuel. nothing wrong with it. They've got everything. Like, you know, it's at Marabin. Costco, ninety five, ninety one, like standard fuel, black and gold brand fuel. Nah, man, nah, <laughs> yeah. nah, nah. This is out of Marabin. They've just got <laughs> some coals. <laughs> some guy just sitting there with <laughs> dirt, water, and fucking oil. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> High octane, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I'm saying if you went to Costco and bought like. You know, a slab of fucking washing powder, a slab of toilet paper, a yeah. slab of, like, dishwashing stuff. You, and that'll last you for fucking six, six do, months. You do save. Like, I remember I bought, um, is it a razors or dishwashing mm. tabs or so I bought something, yeah. and you basically buy three, get one for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? dishwashing tabs, man, like, I fucking went to the supermarket, and they're like 20 odd bucks, and I'm like, bucks. no, fuck that. 20 bucks. For Dude, a couple of little tabs. I'm only doing, the... yeah, I'm only doing my dishwashing load every so often. Yeah. And I'm still going through it. Like, yeah. you, go, you go through it. Speaking of razors, I saw an ad um, from the shaver shop the other day, mm-hmm. and they were advertising a razor. I can't remember what it was, but it was like you never have to change the blade. What? Really? It's just like a standard, like, normal razor, like a shaver, like yeah. a razor, razor blade, and you never have to replace it. Do you have to oil it up and stuff? No, it's just like a normal razor. It's made of fucking diamond. <laughs> diamond tipped. Yeah, I, I don't seriously. know. Yeah, you never have to replace it. What? I looked it up straight away. I was like, oh, cool. Well, That's for real. Made of? Okay. Yeah. What's it made of? I don't know. You, you looked it up. What'd you look up? Titanium. <laughs> Let me look it up. I'll look it up. Yeah. Titanium. Titanium razors. Nah. Damn your little, your little delicate fingers there, Johnny. <laughs> Just gets put in his place. Look at his, look at the contempt in his eyes. I had so much joy and hope dude, when I went to pick it up my phone. That look in your eyes just now is the best. It was just <laughs> the look. Oh. It was just the look like, really, you can't? Like, wait, let me do a stat. <laughs> Assholes. I didn't do it. I would have let you do the stat. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> He's still staring at him, like doubting his skill. <laughs> I don't know, man. Diamond tipped, <laughs> diamond tipped razor blades. It's just yeah, you never have to replace it. What are they worth though? Bit of coin. I remember it yeah, was like how, it was reasonable. It how was like, dumb would you feel if you lost that razor blade? It'd be pricey though. Yeah, I think when I looked at it, I was like, that's not too bad considering you don't have to replace the blades. That doesn't make sense though. Why would they? Say- Where did you see it? The ad. Uh, it was a shaver shop ad on TV. Yeah. Okay, that's strange. Do you know why, man? Because I got a mate that was importing a hydrofin, right? He, pat- he didn't pattern it himself, but he found it when he was in Europe. A hydrofin... I've got one in my car. I'll show you it. It's basically a silicon-based, um, like a squeegee blade for your car, right? I could get the R30... Because I knew the contours of the R31, like the way the um, the panels and shit sort of... Uh, yeah, like... Um, 
The lines of yeah, the... Yeah, the lines and all that sort of shit, yeah. right? Because I knew the bodywork. I could literally get that... The geometry? Afternoon. The geometry? Yeah, the geometry. Of your car? <laughs> <laughs> the physics. I could literally get that car dry, drip, drip, like as in touch dry, bone dry. I could get that dry in about 35 seconds. Ooh. Yeah, I'm serious. Down to a fine art. That is one of the f- only things, only products that I've ever actually gone and worked as a salesman for. Because you believed in it. Yeah. yeah. I'd go to car shows with him. Like, I remember we drove out to, like, Bendigo or Ballarat. Set up shop, boxes, buckets of water, and we'd literally, and like spray bottles, and we'd, it was like a Mustang show. Yeah. And we had, um, one guy that we knew that had a Mustang, like a nice mint looking thing. It's like the, what's, what's a car from Gone 60 Seconds? The, uh, Eleanor, the Shelby GT. Shelby, fight, that's yeah. it. He had one of them, and he let us use that as the demo, because he trusted us with it. We needed a good quality looking car. <laughs> he trusted you, what? Yeah, I know. Crazy, okay. man. <laughs> it comes back with scratch marks. <laughs> um, no, it was like that. <laughs> um, we were just demonstrating for people, and they were losing it. They're like, how is this possible? I'm like, it's silicon-grade-based fucking, you know, plastic, la la la. And it was just, really, it was just squeegee with a hand. That thing? Uh, what brand is it? Uh, Mool. It's made in Germany. Ah, it's a German. Ah, it's a German. It's uh, titanium. That's probably what chrome. it is. I said titanium. Yeah. Crack, uh, chrome. Like, this thing's off its head. Yeah, probably, that's, that's probably, probably it. what it is. Yeah, 72 bucks. When it's worth it. Which, because, because think about it, seventy two. Yeah, well, a pack of razors is twenty bucks. Yeah, and that'll last you forever, apparently, forever. as yeah. long as you shave. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's not too bad. Seventy bucks. That's not bad, dude. I'd spend that just to. Does it look like a Mac three blade or like a standard? Ah, it's like different, man. It's pretty cool. I think it has like interchangeable heads as well, like yeah. different types of blades you can put on. Look at that okay. thing, man. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's man. pretty fucking. That's it's, like it's, an old school. That's off its head. Yeah, yeah, that's an old school razor. Yeah, I love that. And it's solid. Like, it's yeah, not yeah, a, like, yeah. a flimsy fucking yeah. big. Nah, German, <laughs> German engineering. It's three dollar big packs. Yeah. <laughs> just nah, nah. the slice your face. Like, <laughs> slice your face, snap in your hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that looks quali- quality. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So 72 bucks, and but you've got a good razor for the rest of your life. Forever. But the problem yeah. is, man, like, those, those squeegee blades, right? The, um, my mate had found them in Europe. And he followed it up with a company in Europe, I think it was Sweden or something, saying, hey, I want to import these into Australia. They charged him some ridiculous fee. So he opened the one up that he had, found it was made in China somewhere. So he called the cunts in China and said, listen, can I get... Yeah, yes, fine. yes, you can. <laughs> so he started bringing them in. Everyone I showed them to, because he gave me a gross of them and said, yeah, if you can get rid of them, give me a cut or whatever, like, you know, whatever you make out of them and I'll take like a temp. So it's like an alternative to a chamois, right? Yeah, this is better than a chamois. Better than it, yeah. Because a chamois, how often do you replace a chamois? You ha- yeah, you have to. You have to. And, and it leaves. It always leaves a little bit of water. streaks yeah. and grains of, of rock and shit get stuck in mm. chamois and yeah. scratch your car. Yeah. This is basically, it's because it's silicon grade, it pushes the water away. Yeah. Mm. So it doesn't collect anything. Yeah. And literally, touch dry, man. I've got one in my car. I'll show you when we get like we get out of here. Do you this still like use it? Morning telemarketing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'll got a door, it, you got a gym. I'll plug this thing forever, man. And it, I know he's in What's Cyprus. What's it called? He called it the Hydrofin. A hydrofin. Right? I know he's in Cyprus now, but if he comes, uh, I think he's coming back. If he's still got a gross of him, I'll get rid of him for yeah, it. Yeah, man. I think, I, I think I've seen it. Especially it, coming into the warmer months now. People are going to be washing their cars. Dude, and They were the best. They still are the best. And I've had mine for over 10 years. Right, and it's like the day you got it. All you do is wash it in warm water when it gets a bit dirty, and that's it. And hasn't hasn't got like parched last forever. And, yeah, it's and one of the big problems that he had trying to get him into stores was that shop owners like he went to Kmart, he went to servos, he went everywhere, like tried to push him everywhere. And the problem he had was that store owners would say to him, "This is a product that you'd buy once and you wouldn't replace for over ten years. We don't want so it's not good for business. We'd rather have people coming in and spending twenty bucks on chamois every three months, replacing their chamois. Yeah." yeah. And so I told him, like, I gave him the idea, and he, he had thought of it as well, mm. was to get into all the panel beating workshops. Yeah. And he got rid of a lot of them that way, through panelists, well, but I, I mean... I was going to say, dude, I think I saw an infomercial on something like that. Yeah. Like, that would be the route to go. Yeah, like, a little while ago. Infomercial. I remember seeing one on, on an infomercial that was si- sort of similar, and I'm like, man, these have already existed for, like, a decade, and, like, I had a mate that was fucking selling them, yeah. but it was just too hard to get into Kmart and shit because they didn't want to sell them. Like, why mm. sell a customer... Something that's going to last them 10, 15 years when they can just keep coming back every three months. It's going to make all their other products obsolete. Yeah. How yeah. ridiculous is that, man? Mm. That's fucked. Well, yeah, that's razors, I guess, the same sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Consumerism, man. I've never heard of this fucking razor. And I go to the shaper shop, man. I saw the ad and I was like, damn, I looked it up straight away. Pretty boss, man. 70 bucks. That, that Hydrofin reminds me of something else I saw on Wish. It's like this thing you can buy. And actually, like, you scrape it over your windshield wiper blades... 
and it rejuvenates them back to like new again. The so, rubber? Yeah, the rubber. Really? Yeah. Oh, wiper blades are fucked. It's like a little box, and you just like it's obviously got some sort of cutting device in there, and you run it through the like. Put it, put oh, it, so yeah. it's like a sharpening tool. Yeah, like a like a knife sharpener, but for yeah. the for the windshield wiper blades. Yeah. yeah but what's the cost to replace windshield wipers? Like twenty bucks. Oh, you're looking a bit more now. Nah, really? Yeah, depending on the model of your car and stuff like that. You're kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Probably like 30, 35 bucks. Probably, yeah. yeah. Cars. Yeah, they rip you, man. It's finished. Like, remember when we were like teenagers, like when we got our cars, yeah. we got a Repco and like, uh, we, we went through what was we got like 15 bucks. Yeah, I remember giving <laughs> the guy a 20 at Repco and he changed them for me. Yeah. Because mm. I'd, I'd say, oh, when I first changed the ones on, um, I think it was the EA even. Oh, and I said, yeah. yeah, I was in Preston. I still remember it. I was in Preston with my cousin and the wipers came on. Like, I was in, it started raining, and I was smearing everywhere. He's like, oh, man, your wipers are fucked. I go, are they? Goes, yeah, man, there's a rep cage. Just here. let's pull in. I remember giving the guy, okay, mate, I need wipers for an AA. Oh, yeah, here you go. Gave me the box. Yeah, okay, cool, thanks. Because you got uh, pliers on you? I'm like, oh, no, nah, I don't. He goes, all right, cool, don't worry about it. Like, here, give them to me. I gave him 20 bucks, and he fucking clipped Beautiful. them off and put them on my car. The good old days, the human touch. Yeah, dude, yeah, now. Man, see? The, the, that was customer service. He's 20 bucks, and you just change it for me, man. Yeah. Like, no I would have been like 19 Everyone's years happy. old. Yeah. I would have been 19 years old. He got 20 bucks, and you got new wipers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, it's just like, nah. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah, deal with it. It's like, I don't know how to do it. No, it's not my problem. Yeah, yeah you I'm, go in there now, it's like, sorry, I'm busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's hard enough to get fucking customers. And he's sitting there, and the guy's like, doing his nails. <laughs> oh, that shits me. Like, when I go into a store, and they're doing something completely pedestrian, that's like, mm. not related to just their job. scrolling through Facebook or something. Yeah, some shit. Or just pretending to be busy, like, just looking at a computer screen, because they can't be fucked. <laughs> I'm on Playing. the phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, the new just... cage thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that uh, shop, where did you say you found this wiper thing? Uh, so it's like an app called Wish. Yeah, what is that? A lot I of, seriously uh, had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah, I got a little obsessed with it. I went a bit crazy. I got swept up in the Wish craze. <laughs> so what, it's, what's it called? It's, Wish? A, it's an app, and yeah. you're like... Yeah, it's like all stuff from China, and you put in like. <laughs> I'm I'm honestly picturing all the crap you find in show bags. Wish that you shopping. Just throw out. It's almost like Caribbean Market online, but Is more stuff. That thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna look it up and. They had another thing on there, dude. For shit. It's like this big yellow magnet device that goes over your fuel lines in your in your under your hood of your car somewhere, and it's meant to like save you a ton on fuel. How? Don't know. Something to do with the magnets drawing the fuel through slower or something. But I read through the comments and people are like, this shit actually works. Like, I tried it and it works. How's your watch going? Is it still working? Oh, my watch is great. How yeah. good did it look? How, How much did it cost you? It in? Yeah. Two dollars. Two bucks, man. And it, it actually looks cheap. Re- it feels good. It's cool. You know it, what? It, it I should have worn cool. it. I should have worn it. It looks nice. It looks nice. For two bucks, for man. Two bucks? It, even if it came back, she'd be like, oh, it was two bucks. No, it's, yeah. I showed a few people and they're like, damn, that looks, Free that looks nuts. It's like two dollars postage, so four. So bucks. four bucks it doesn't. Altogether. It doesn't feel cheap though. Like when you pick it up, it doesn't feel like an expensive watch, but it doesn't feel like pure shit. Like it's it's nice. It's <laughs> it, nice. It's not a Casio or anything. Pure shit. No Rolex, but <laughs> pure shit. <laughs> no, it's really cool, man. I like it. I, was, I bought so much shit off there though. I went crazy. What did you buy? Because I saw the slingshot. And the first thing I thought was, how the fuck did you get that into this country? Yeah, I bought weapons. What weapons? Uh, I got like a ninja star that's in the shape of a sort of star, but it's like the same concept as a ninja star, but it's like a card, like a plane. Yeah, yeah, you sh- I shared it on the. Um... Yeah, it's a metal playing card yeah. with sharpened edges. I got that. I got a slingshot. I got slingshot bullets. Why? LED lights. I just went nuts, dude. Because everything's so it's so- like an eBay. Sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sort of much, thing. pretty much. But it's just shopping. You can't. I'm sell honestly on picturing, there. yeah, the show bags with full of crap that you'd never fucking buy, like ever, because they like, just clutter your house it's up. It's weird, man. Like they have everything on there, like. Like laser sights for guns, like, like you, just anything you can think of, they have it. It's really weird, but just like children, a, like, <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> moonshine kit. You uh, know what I mean? If you want to make yeah, shit paper. like that. Seriously, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. Is there anything of actual substance? Because so far you've given me a shoddy watch for two bucks. Well, a weapon. actually, the, my you've favorite- given me a weapon, a slingshot. Because that's what you need. My, you know? my favorite. Wait, I'm on it now. I just downloaded it. Okay. My, my favorite. I'm gonna create an account. Now you got to put in your um like date of birth and like some of your interests, and then it sort of like you know market market targets you. <laughs> Dildos, vibrators. Let's have a look. They do have sex toys. Of course they do. I know you looked into it. You're a filthy pig. And what you just put in your <laughs> bank details? What are you protected by? As in, is it a dodgy app? No, nah, no, nah, it's legit. Um, I've never, because I've never heard of it. The coolest thing that I bought, dude, it's a power bank, but it's also a case. It's power bank and a case in one. Okay. So you slide your phone into the case, put the top on, and then when your phone runs out of charge, you just push the bottom down the button and it just recharges your phone. It's like the coolest thing ever. It works yeah, perfect. Yeah, there's heaps of those, though. What yeah, it but it was like $16. 
Yeah, I know you can buy them on eBay and shit. Yeah. It's probably be more than 16 bucks. It's kind of, it's fucked because you see shit that you don't really need, but because it's sort of cheap, you just want it and you buy it. Yeah. And I got, I got sucked into that. That's I'm saying. You just, fil- you find them all over your house. Yeah. I got filters for my vape machine. Um, I can go through what, what I mean bought. filters? Uh, like the coils. Oh, when do you use your vape? Uh, I haven't seen you vape in about a year. Yeah, that's why, because I had no coils. <laughs> Oh, the excuses come out. No, I need these filters. Do you want me to run through some of the shit I've bought? Yeah, all right. I've received so many packages. <laughs> Wish. Because I don't know any... When you said it in that convo, I'm like, what the hell's Wish? Like, I've never heard of it. And I'm usually... Like, you know, I use Ali. I use um, iOffer. There's a whole bunch of all those sort of sites. There's heaps. Wish is good, dude. And I bought a Bluetooth receiver for my car, which is unbelievable. What does it do? Uh, it's like a Bluetooth FM receiver. Okay. Uh, transmitter. So... So you might connect my phone to it. And then it just plays wirelessly through the stereo, through the FM. Oh, yeah, dude, I got that on my head unit. So but it's cool, man. Like, you can control your phone through this little thing. Like, it just looks sick. Like, yeah. And it was, like, six bucks. Can you get Bluetooth earpieces? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want one of them. Like, yeah. a tiny, tiny... Like, like a James Bond spy, man. Pretty much anything, yeah. So I can just walk around shopping centers, like, stat. Yeah. <laughs> anything you can think of, dude, they have it. Like, everything from, See, like... See, I used to be really bad... A lot of watches... Shipping. Yeah, because they're the crap that people will buy. Dude, I saw that in a restaurant. I was in um, I was in Springy having dinner, and there was this dude sitting at a table a couple of meters away. And he was young. He was probably like 19, 18, like no more than that, man. He's wearing like shitty trackies, like fucked up runners, some shitty hoodie, like had the neck tat. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like looked like filth, fucking dirty baseball cap or whatever, mm-hmm. sitting at a table with like all these little, you know, Bogan rats. Like, they just look fucked, right? <laughs> but he had this big fucking fat watch on that <laughs> looked like it was expensive. I was like, he bought that at the Caribbean Gardens, Caribbean market. Like, that, that's a Caribbean, that's a Caribbean you're market. You're holding your wrist job. out like your primo. Like, dude, you're dressed like a fucking hobo. Like, <laughs> Look at me, I'm a player. Dude, yeah, you should have bought this watch for two bugs. <laughs> that's mad. That's <laughs> Spider-Man. Two bugs. Yeah, that's mad. <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> but I would rock that watch, that Spider-Man yeah. watch. There's one I want on there. It's like a silver one. It's really nice. <laughs> it's like an old school silver looking one. You'll fight. Look at both of these. That's man. pretty both cool. Both these man. on your phones. I also got my like triple glove. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I also got my uh, black peel off face mask from there. Oh, you're fucked. Which is actually great. I Does must it say. Work? Oh shit! Beautiful. Makes your skin feel so soft and succulent. It just removes blackheads and shit. Yeah. Yeah, just all impurities, like, like whatever. Cog. <laughs> He's using it all over his body. I haven't tried it on my penis yet. He's using it all over his body. I love it. I haven't tried it on my penis yet. Yes. He's got, got it like, on his legs, his thighs. A bunch what are you of, doing? A bunch of microfiber towels for my car, which was free, $2 shipping, like, just stuff like that. Like, you don't really need, but you buy it because you see it. How much was that black face shit? Oh, you're right now. Dollar <laughs> fifty. Seriously. I paid for my black peel off face mask. I paid. It's just loading. <laughs> <laughs> you got ripped off, didn't you? Yeah, like 80 bucks. Yeah. No. $4 shipping, $80 product. <laughs> what? $4 product, $80 shipping. <laughs> oh, it's this must be good. Yeah, yeah, man. It was like a dollar, I think. How much for shipping? A dollar. And $2 shipping. Yeah, that, that's good for your face. Yeah, <laughs> what, could be, what could be in it that's good for three No, no, bucks? I actually looked up the brand. It's like one of the oldest, like most reputable ones. What's it retail at? So you get it here for about 10 bucks, but off here I got it for like a dollar. Okay, what? How is that? Shills. Shills black peeled off face mask. Okay, how is that though? How is can... it legit? Like, look. Or is it counterfeit? No, it's legit. No, no, no. It's got Do a they sell clothes on Wish? Yep. Yeah, everything. Yep. Everything, man. Because it's that's... like Ali. It's like Ali. I know, but Ali's not that cheap like that. Yeah, it's weird. How can it be that cheap though? Like, I got those LED lights that go behind your TV. <laughs> It's like a strip of LED lights, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. emits a glow on the wall, and it make, gives you like a bit of bit of feeling yeah, when you play yeah, games yeah. and stuff. That that's awesome. Like that was free with two dollars shipping. Like, and I just buy it because I see it. I'm like, I want that now. This guy just buys like you know little sex gadgets. toys yeah. and fucking. He's got the model planes hanging from like his doorways. Yeah, dude, yeah. I, I got totally sucked into it, bad. But I, I'm happy with all the shit I got. I got these cool things from my car. They go down the side of the seat like these leather pads that go down the side of your seat, so nothing can drop. In that gap between where like the handbrake is and the seat. Oh yeah, I always cop that. Yeah, like you, you just put them in there, and it's you can't lose anything down the side of the seats now. Like just stuff what like that. What does that cost you? Uh, I'll try and find uh, right there, right here. Jesus Christ! Even dollars are cheap. <laughs> are you serious, dude? Ten bucks. I may or may not have bought a sex toy, but I won't go into that. Yeah, you will, because you told us you were going to tell us. You actually said you were going to tell us. All right, so here's those. <laughs> I love how you push. There's the see the pads for the car. Yeah, yeah. 
Two dollars. Man, there are stoners all over the world right now just staring at this app. Like, right now, just... I want that. Uh, I want that. I need that. Yeah. Oh, I got... Yeah. Impulse buying for stoners. That's what these... I should fucking create an <laughs> app that just reroutes other products like that from other products and just charge like a, you know, 30 cent membership Dude, fee or something. Holy shit. You know how many people buy sex toys off this thing? Yeah. It tells you how many people have bought it. Yeah. And it has like... The cool thing about it is you go into product rating and it has people's... Like what they say about it. They have a little write-up on it. Yeah, that's the same as I offer and... um. Ali and all that. And he, like, it's like eBay, dude. Look, eBay does look that. Look at this little weapon I bought. What the hell is that? It's like perfectly ergonomic to fit in your hand, and it's like a little, like a point for like punching. <laughs> but why would you want that? I don't know, keep it in your pocket or in your keychain. Oh, if... uh, yeah, okay. You know what, man? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. No, 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 no. Do you know, know what that brings up? I was, I was watching Collateral, right, the other night. Yeah. And, great, man. Great movie. You know, that's the first time I've sat and watched a movie on my own from start to finish. Yeah, you just like, in fuck like it, I'm going to watch it. I don't remember the last time I did it, man. I'd prob- the last time I did it was probably when I was sick as, like, on my deathbed back in 2013, when I had this fucked up flu. Oh, and I was off work as well. That was the last time, man. So it's been three, four years easy that I-, I sat and watched a movie from start to finish by myself. By yourself. Yeah. And I was watching Collateral, and I forgot how fucking good that movie is, man. Great movie. One of the things about Tom Cruise, like, we are talking about, you know, we are saying how he's a great actor despite his nuttiness. Anything he's in, he... Brings life to the movie, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's, he's a great actor. Great he's, actor. A, he's a nut job, but he's a great actor, right? Like, R. Kelly's a freak, but he's a great producer. <laughs> also right? quite cute, yeah. Who? Tom Cruise. Mm. Such oh, a Scientologist, man. Oh, God, <laughs> Yeah, man. carry on. My way with Actually, something. you know what? I look at you, and you could be one of his children. As in, <laughs> as in one of his Scientology children. <laughs> oh, the weird, crazy yeah. Scientology yeah. kid. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. Yeah, no, you like um, Seth Green in um, Austin Powers. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shut up, Dad. Yeah. He comes out at the start, and he's all, like, um, disdain. Then he comes out, and he's, like, cross-dressing. <laughs> it's like the emo goth kid. <laughs> Just messed up. That's you. <laughs> Stop calling him Seth. <laughs> Seth, don't. Seth, don't. So what were you saying about Tom? Bobby. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Back to Mr. Cruise. Yeah. I was watching how, um, you know the scene when Jamie Foxx is cable tied to the car? Yep. And so Tom Cruise fucks off and then comes back and he's getting mugged yep. for the suitcase and shit. Yep. And then Tom Cruise comes up and says, like, yo, homie, is that Got my, my bag? bag? <laughs> and he comes back in that split second, he's snatched the gun away from him, shot him in the, re- like in the ribs like two, three times. And I, I watched the scene like a couple times. Two in the stern and one in the head. Yeah. While he's shooting him in the ribs, the guy next to him, who looks like a neo-Nazi, he's got like a shaved head and the khaki mm. sort of pants and the bomber jacket, he's struggling to get his gun out of his, um, like he's got, had it tucked hostile, in his, like a- not even a hostile, he just had it tucked in his jeans, mm. like, you know, under a jacket. Yeah, gangster style. That guy's struggling to get the pistol out, and that time, Tom Cruise just turned around and shot him as well. Yeah, just precision killer. Yeah, and I was reading some of the comments on YouTube as well, and it reminded me, because Michael Mann directed that movie, mm. and Michael Mann has directed some fucking good movies, man. He did Heat, which okay. is also one of the best movies ever. And the one thing that Heat did, as well as... And they were saying the same thing about um, Collateral, was the gunplay, as in it was realistic. One way you can tell if an actor's been trained to shoot a gun properly is if they blink, like, you know, when they fire the gun. Like, they blink because of the recoil and the... It's like they've it's never, a shock, yeah. Yeah, they've never fired a gun before, so they blink, and they just sort of hold the gun with one hand and just stare randomly at the... Per- they don't stare down the barrel of the yeah, gun. Not they just pro. stare at the person they're shooting, mm-hmm. Yeah, right? But if you watch Tom Cruise, takes like he takes pride in his stunt work, and he does like the military training with the real firearms to get the feel full legit. Done. So if you watch him in Collateral, full form, like you know he's in the club. That nightclub scene is fucking incredible. I remember watching it and thinking this is mm. sick. Mm. He's on the ground, like when he's on the ground, dives for the gun after he's being tackled or whatever. Like scoops it up, full two hands on the holster uh, on the on the butt of the gun, mm. arms extended, boom, 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 turns around. Shoots the next dude, stands up, reloads in like one instant, bang. Again, like shoots the, you know, that witness that's sitting on the, that big fat Korean dude. Yep. Yep. <laughs> shoots the witness, <laughs> yeah. right, in the chest, and then runs out of bullets. Like he just fires until he runs out of bullets, drops the clip, reloads, and then keeps firing in the two to the chest, one to the head. Yeah. To make sure he's going to finish a job. Like a, like yeah. a military. Just a hitman, yeah. Yeah, military hitman. Mm. And it's like realistic like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's what I was saying about Tom Cruise. Like, you know, you look at all these movies, and same with Michael Mann. Like, he makes the point of making sure everyone... Like, you know the, um, the bank job scene in um, in Heat? Mm. Like, at the end, when the, when the job goes down, yeah, and yeah. the big shootout in the street, mm-hmm. Val Kilmer, like, reloading his um, 
his M, is it like an M4 and M16? I think it's an M16. Like the, he, he literally reload, he empties a clip and reloads it and then starts firing again in like three, four seconds. And yeah. that's like Marine standard. Yeah. Like he, Michael Mann has attention that. to detail. Yeah, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer's a gun man. <laughs> you seen him lately? Fuck. Oh, he's fucked. Dude, he's what fighting up? cancer or something. Is he? he? Yeah, no, man. Man. I thought, yeah, he yeah. Spe- I thought he was just being a pig. No, no, no. He's he was for a while. Dude, he's fighting then... cancer. He became a pig. Uh, he didn't become a pig. <laughs> he became a pig. <laughs> he, went, he got overweight during that bang bang. You're dead. Kiss kiss bang bang or something. He plays like a gay. I think after Batman it all went downhill. Yeah, no. Nah, after Batman. No, he was after Batman. He was such a stud. Back in the his day. Prime. Yeah, yeah, he was. Dude, he, he, he played like a gay something. It was like, kiss, kiss, bang, hell? bang. What's that? Is that recent? Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm almost positive. Can I say recent, he's, Val? He's, dude, I'm we, almost positive he has spotted with a breathing aid. Yeah, dude, he's sick. I'm telling you. Oh, Val. Hang on. Uh, he can always be my wingman. Oh, yes. Mr. Kilmer. Val Kilmer, sick. I'm serious. I'm not even joking. Who was he in Top Gun? Iceman or something? Mm? Top Gun. He, Iceman? Yeah. What the hell? Val, uh, Val Kuma has cancer. He's from Tom Cruise as well. <laughs> yeah, yes. Just funnily enough. Yes. Yeah, dude. Fucking, it was sick. Hang on. Health. Here this is with Daily Mail. Uh, Val Kuma spiked health fears after he was pictured with a tracheostomy tube late last year. I reckon he just let himself go, then he just blamed it on health issues. You're an idiot. In January 2015, Kuma was hospitalized for what his representative said were tests for what could be a possible tumor. Kuma said on social media, I have... a have not had a tumour or a tumour operation or anything of the sort. I had a complication where the best way to receive care was to stay under the watchful eye of UCLA ICU. After previously denying persistent rumours that he had been diagnosed with cancer, Kilmer said in April 2017 that he had a healing of cancer. So he had a cancer of some sort. Tracheostomy, yeah, yeah, may be created for a number of reasons, including to deliver oxygen to lungs where a person is unable to breathe normally after um, like a procedure. Yeah. Hey, Val Kilmer, April, 3rd, April 30th, Val Kilmer admits his healing of cancer. Yeah. Confirmed he had cancer and he's now doing okay after months of denying he was sick. That's like that Johnny Ruffo kid, you know, the Australian kid that was in Home and Away? No, you were talking about him the other day. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I think you mentioned him. And no, I, I, I didn't. I had no idea who you were talking about. I didn't. Who the hell was talking about him then? Someone was. I don't know, but he just had a really bad migraine, went to the hospital an emergency tumour fucking operation. Really? His whole, like, his whole head cut open and just like... Yeah, but that's what happens, man. Fragile life. Yeah, but th- that happens. Like, you know, you don't yeah. know what's wrong and all of a sudden you've got a fucking stroke. Oh, hey, I've got another movie review. Or not really review, but something that I... I've asked you guys if you've seen. Have you seen the new Mad Max? No, and I don't want to. Fury Road? No. no. I won't watch it. It's so good. Why won't you I watch won't... it? Because. I don't like... <laughs> because. I, 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 don't li- I don't like watching remakes of sorts. Uh, I just don't. I, I didn't. Um, it's complete. Total Recall. I didn't watch it. The new one. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Uh, Malaka watched Total Recall, and I, and I like Colin Farrell. And I asked him what's Total Recall like. He said it'd be good. It, it was a good movie, but because it was a remake of Total Recall, it wasn't the same. That's the exact thing you get with Mad Max. It should have just been its own separate movie. But it's really fucking cool. That's the thing, dude. I didn't grow up watching Mad Max. I don't think I've ever watched Mad Max all the way through. I d- that's I, just me. I wasn't either, surprisingly enough. But mm. I went back and just checked it out. It's not bad. I just refuse to watch remakes. Mel Gibson. Dude, I Scarface refuse. is getting remade. I won't watch it. Yeah, I, I don't even... I'll know. watch the reviews of people that say that shit and they should have left it, because it's the same thing every time. Every time you hear, see a remake, it was good, but they should have just left the original and not remade the movie. Just right. name it something else. That You know what? That's what shits yeah. me the most. Yeah. Point, point Break was all right, the remake. <laughs> the what? Point, point break. break. I heard fucking nothing but shit for that, man. No, it's good. You know what shits me about remakes? is the fact that because it's such a big industry now, right, where they just keep rebooting the same franchise. Like fucking Spider-Man. We've had three reboots in ten years. With, like, three different actors. It's like, three why? Three man. The Not McGuire, necessarily- then the English kid, Garfield, yeah. Andrew Garfield, whatever his name is, and now the, the latest one. Three fucking reboots since we were in high school. For fuck's sakes, man. And not just that. Can I just tell you what they've got to stop making? They've got to stop making Fast and Furious. They've really just got to stop making them now. What is it, like, up at eight or something? Eight. Dude. I think it was the last the, one was eight. Yeah, and it got released. I gave up on it. It went straight to, like, went to the movies, and it didn't last long, and then it went straight to DVD or something. I wouldn't shit. know. Like I said, I, just, I've I haven't seen, watched it. I've seen, like, ten minutes of the first one, and that was it. I never watched yeah. it. They just really got to stop making them now. <laughs> like this uh, is beyond re- a joke. <laughs> beyond the joke, dude. I do recommend Mad Max. Though it's a fucking cool movie. Just the way man. it looks. Yeah. Like it's- I'll get look. I'll give it a go on Bobby's recommendation, dude. If it's shit, I'm coming back for blood. Nah, dude. <laughs> it's it's get- super cool. This it's is what super I get, cool. Right? 
In my, 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 probably one of my top ten. How actions. often does an artist re release, like remaster or recreate a previous album? Never. I can think of one person, Alanis Morissette. <laughs> yeah, did it. She fucking re-recorded. Isn't it ironic? Yeah, she re-recorded all her songs yeah. from that album. Like the Jagged Little Pill yeah, album. Yeah. She re-recorded. Which was a Why? good album that on was its a, own. Yeah. Like, it was a pretty good album for that time. For that, yeah, it was a... That era. That was, was huge a, at that time. It was a grungy feminist yeah. album. And for, for what it was... It was a, in that era, it was yeah, groundbreaking yeah. for, like, that demographic. Why re-record it? She Why? re-recorded and the same she album. She couldn't let go of the glory days. Well, what else has she done yeah, since then? That's why. It's like, I just want to relive it. I just want to be... She, she hasn't done anything, yeah. right? She's done dick or She married, was it Ryan Reynolds? Or something? Yes, I think that's so. what she became known for. Like, yeah, that, that was again. it. I'm on it, literally. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm and I'm being petty because I'm going after her social, her personal life. But, dude, what is? And she was in Dogma. You know, Kevin Smith made a god. Okay, you know, and then she, her. You know, she looks like. Oh, here we go. She looked like Dave Grohl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Nirvana. Female version. Dude, yeah. in Nirvana. Yeah, totally. Yeah, man. Yeah, totally. When Grohl was a drummer. <laughs> when Grohl was a drummer. So the latest one I said was the drummer for Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, you knew what I was talking about. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, I, I feel like she hit the market at just the right time, and everything worked for her. And then she probably couldn't do anything after it was that. Nothing more relevant. So now she's just like, I'm just going to re-release it. You know what I remember days listening back. to when Jagged Little Pill was out because I, I couldn't stand that shit right I, I thought it was the dumbest crap like because remember we were only like what 10 you know like because my sister fucking loved that album I got one hand in my pocket oh, I hated that song man the I other one smoking a cigarette I hated that song Ryan Reynolds man. you're right yeah it was Ryan Reynolds yeah. dude because that album doesn't speak to me, obviously. It wouldn't speak to any of us. It's a, it's a fucking grungy feminist album, right? Which is fine. Like, you can do whatever you want if you're not. I don't, I don't care. I did like it back in the day, though. I still listen to it. You're a bitch. Yeah. Right? But that's the thing. Back you with our uh, No Doubt, No Doubt days. Oh, Tragic fuck. Kingdom. I I don't hate. speak. Great, great album. I hate Don't Speak. Don't it's speak. Dude. I know what, what Trollman's thinking. I think of... Every time I think of Jagged Little Pill, I think of Tupac, um, California... Uh, California Love. Because they were both on the, I'm pretty sure they were both on the radio around the same time, man. Oh, both on the top 40 hits at the same yeah, time. Like, both competing. California Love. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Search when Ironic was actually released. I'm pretty sure I remember. Do you want know to. They trigger one memory for me. Yeah? When was when was that song? Jagged Little Pill? 95. Jagged Little Pill? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And California Love was released in 96. Yeah. So they were both around at the same time. Yeah. I get vivid fucking. Image, imagery in my head. Chalk and cheese, Nick. Those two. <laughs> Chalk and cheese, man. <laughs> really? Chalk and yeah. cheese. I seriously, you know what I can picture? <laughs> at, at my mum's joint, like, um, like, a, like in, my, in the house I grew up in, right? My bedroom and my sister's bedroom were divided initially. Originally, they were divided by like a door, like a door, right? So I had to go from like the kitchen through my sister's room to get to my room. Wait, she had an Alanis Morissette poster on one side and you had a two-pack poster on the other? <laughs> Is that where we're Calm going? Down, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she had. No, it was the other way life. around. <laughs> yeah. Because it was 95, 96. Yeah, so just, you were like grade five. Yeah, I was like nine, ten years old. It was around that time when... Not jacking it yet. Sister, <laughs> you're fucked. It was around that time when my sister and I started listening to different music. Like, to like because I remember... If I think of growing up, some of the things I remember, one thing was being with my sister sitting down like on the on the bedroom floor with like a tape deck and just recording songs off the radio yeah dude like i remember that like crystal clear yeah i like, used to do the, make mixtapes i used to do the same thing with my sister i used yeah. to tape triple m yeah yeah like, like uh, headbangers ball and stuff yeah. we literally just <laughs> cycle rifle through the radio and like young. hey this is a cool song so we'd record the tape yeah. or like we would do tape to tape shit like all that sort of yeah. stuff yeah that was great that was so great it was around 95 96 when we started to develop our own sort of tastes right and i remember vividly listening to california love and I remember my sister listening to Jagged Little... Not saying that my sister doesn't like Tupac. She does. She loves Tupac. I, I invited her to come and see All Eyes on Me. You know? Yeah. We grew up listening to mm. Tupac. But I remember Jagged Little Pill was like the start yeah. of the turn. That was the, that was the fork in the road and you, yeah. you took the gangster path. Exactly. Because yeah. like, I remember being in grade six listening to West Side Connection Bow Down and my sister listening to Jagged Little Pill. You should make a collaboration, man, between Jagged Little Pill and... <laughs> yeah. I was listening to Pearl Jam Nirvana. Around that time, yeah, yeah, because yeah, your sister was older, yeah, and she was a grunge head, yeah, exactly. So I remember that really, really clearly. So every time I think of Jagged Little Pill and Alaris Morissette's stupid face, I think of Dr. Dre and Tupac doing fucking California Love. You yeah, know what I mean? chalk and cheese. Oh fuck off, man! It really is though. 
<laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Ho- yeah. <laughs> Pale white horse face and then... Anyway, black, my, black my dude. fucking point... Want to be, be Dave Grohl. What? I <laughs> <laughs> just want to be Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl's sister. <laughs> the whole point was that I can... When I... When they remake these fucking movies... Maybe it was Dave Kroll in drag. Maybe. You know what? He's done a lot of stuff. Just like a little that. bit of, like, uh, surgery here. and Like, not surgery, but, like... Yeah. Latex. Yeah, yeah. latex. Yeah. You had the best, like, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire thing going yeah. on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> had a Jewish brother that made him up. Ironically. <laughs> did it? Ironically. Did, did Doubtfire come around that, that time? Mrs. Doubtfire. Very- oh, no, I got it. I got it. I, got I think it. we're onto something here. <laughs> How are we tying this in? Like dumb cunts. Alanis Morissette, Dave Grohl, and Mrs. Doubtfire. Like dumb cunts. They are eerily similar. Dumb cunts. Dude, 93, 93. Yeah, so it was around that area. That long, pale face. Oh, my God. Because when did Kirk Cobain kill himself? Dude, (laughs) Arch Arch just messaged me from last night. What do you say? After we were playing, right? And, yeah, we explained to you um, with the FIFA thing. I picked Arsenal and played, beat him like 4-0 in the t- aggregate, like two legs. Dave Trump with a spanking out yeah, here, yes. Yeah, and I picked, um, I was just using different teams. Then Man City yeah. beat him like 2-0. Switched to Chelsea, lost. Switched to uh, Liverpool, got fucking thumped. And then switched, the last one was with Man U. And I, I, it was respectable, but I didn't win. Right, I got a goal in, yeah. you know what I mean? And when I walked this guy out to um, his car... I said, fuck this, man. I'm messaging Arch. And I'm going to say, look, Liverpool is shit. Like, they pissed me off. Like, straight up. That's all he said. That's yeah, all you're right. And shit. I texted him. Look, I texted him, 10.45, Liverpool is shit. He just messaged me, LOL, this guy. Did you use him in FIFA and lose? <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> and for anyone that doesn't know, Arch is like crazy Liverpool fan. Like, yeah. it bleeds Liverpool. And Liverpool fans, they're either all or nothing. That's yeah, it. one there's either no, There's way. no, like... Like Collingwood, Carlton, like, yeah. it's just, yeah, there's no one way or the other. So, just quickly before we talk tie this in 93 you said what was 1993 like Mrs. Delphi yeah yeah Cobain died in 94 so Grohl got so, the idea in 93 yeah. after watching Doubtfire <laughs> yeah Cobain killed himself in 94 became Alanis Morris at 95 <laughs> <laughs> done Sold. done that actually happened do you know what that's like that's like an Ace Ventura where the hiker Lois Einhorn goes missing Ray Finkel gets institutionalised yeah, yeah. comes back as Lois Einhorn they think <laughs> done that's fucked done and Finkel looks like Grohl as well they've both got that mo oh fuck this is ridiculous this is awesome that's a joke and I'm pretty sure Ace Ventura came out in 94 as well so that's how she got so famous she was actually a man it's actually Dave Grohl. Wow. Makes Listen sense. Listen to this spurious crap. You know, I still haven't actually made my point of what I, why I brought all this up. Oh, yeah. What is the point? <laughs> the point was, is like, how many artists re-record their fucking old albums? Oh, yeah. No one. No one. How many artists will re-record another artist's entire album? No one. They might cover a song as a tribute, or they might do a whole style of song, uh, a style, a genre. Mm-hmm. To, to pay tribute to an artist. You know, like someone might do like Frank Sinatra covers. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no one is going to like, no one is going to come out and record Michael Jackson, Ma- Michael Jackson's Thriller album just because. Mm. So why are we doing it with movies? Mm. Why are they deciding, let's take Scarface and remake Scarface again. Now, I understand the marketing point of it. And I understand like Scarface was an iconic movie. So let's mm. make the most money out of it. And, you know, maybe we can do a good job of it. Yeah, it's great. But what shits me is knowing how many actors, screenwriters, script writers... Involved. Like, all that, right? You're telling me no one's got an original idea that could be the next Scarface or just as iconic as The Godfather? How many novels out there that can be adapted into really good movies? Write a movie called Cuntface. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. You like, know what I mean? Like, yeah. Cuntface. <laughs> because, I, I mean, I myself... Having Wound face. <laughs> Wound face. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're I, saying. I myself, having been involved in media and art and shit for that long... And not like my cousin, I remember when I was when I first started making music, man. I was like fucking fourteen or whatever. And my cousin said to me, "I wonder what happens when we run out of music one day." I'm like, "What do you mean? Like when there's no more music to make? Like it's all been made?" I go, "Dude, it's never going to happen." No. Because what do you mean? There'll always be something new. I go, "Dude, I myself, I go, I was only like fifteen, sixteen, like no more than that." And I said, "Dude, I myself have got how many hundreds of songs and ideas that I'm getting down? So many sequences, so many." Yeah, I go. I and I'm only one person. I go. I I myself could make enough music to last for the rest of my life. 
And there are millions of us out there. Me and my friend were talking about this the other day. I was saying, like, what's going to be... Is there going to be, like, a brand new genre? Like a, like a yeah. groundbreaking, like, There'll new always sound? always be a new sound. Whether it's recycling old yeah. sounds or going into another direction completely. Because... Because ones I could think of was, like, dubstep. Like, that was kind of different. Yeah. You know, like, stuff like that. But dubstep but, was just an amalgamation of dub, electronic shit, yeah. D&B. Like, there was heaps of yeah. elements in dubstep. And... Dubstep could not be created in the 70s where digital synthesizers weren't really the way they are now. Yeah, yeah, with music, all the different sounds. Music sound, is yeah. one thing that is constantly transformed yeah. because of technology. You know? Like, it's constantly progressive. And that's why I love psychedelic psytrance trance because the music itself progresses with technology. Like, there's a big difference between psychedelic trance in the 80s and psychedelic trance now. Yeah. It just constantly evolves and gets people, forces people to learn technology and adapt yeah. to what's around them, yeah. it's constantly um, ever-growing. Ever yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you couldn't make a dubstep album in the fucking 40s. When imagine, all you got you imagine that, that shit. No, well, all you got is Elvis. You got Elvis on a guitar. Yeah. And drum kits weren't even established yet, man. It was Gene Krupa that established the first professional drum kit. Have you seen Gene Krupa? Uh, he's, he's considered, like, the grandfather of um, modern-day drumming. Yeah, I'll show you. All right, so we're going to post this, right? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm sticking with my theory. All right, you tell me, right? That's Dave Grohl, Nirvana in '94 when Kurt Cobain killed himself, and that's Alanis Morissette '95 when she bought that jagged little pill. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same person. It's, it's clearly the same person. Yeah, it's the same person. Just a little bit of latex here and there. Yeah, man. Just to feminize it up a bit. You're fucked, dude. Do me a favor. Yeah. Pull up. Go to um, Wikipedia and just pull up Gene Krupa's bio. So that's a good question. Why don't they do that with music like they do with the movies? What do you mean? Like remake them like that? Why? Because it's kind of the same sort of thing. Yeah, like of they're it's classics, the it's, people love it. Yeah, what everyone loves. But nobody does it with music, really. What do you need to know? Just read the first sort of blurb on him that gives him. So, well, if we talk about his drum solo on Sing 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 in 1937, just like- elevated the role of a drummer. Um, yeah, does it say anything about him modernizing the kit? Because I remember reading it. Yeah, he's also known for defi- um, defiant. Uh, Right? That doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> Wikipedia's entry doesn't make sense. No. It doesn't. <laughs> it's a Wikipedia entry. I, I, I can't read it, so it doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, uh, he's also known for the standard drum kit used today in collaboration with um, Zildjian and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So basically, Like what, the setup of it or yeah, like the okay, materials? He's considered the founding father of modern drum set by Modern Drummer Magazine. Yeah. Like you picture a drum kit, right? You've got the snare, the toms, the, ri- uh, the rise. The hi-hat. The hi-hat symbols, right? Crash. Before then, they were all sort of separated. One guy was on the snare, one guy was on a cymbal or the crash. Or like they weren't really combined into the setup that they are, the ensemble setup. He was the one in a recording studio. He's like, you know what? One man can do this. Bring me the fucking snare, put the hat here, bring me the crash, put the time... He aligned, oh, that's he really, coordinated. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Anyone, that's, anyone that's anyone, that it's a drummer, you knows know who him. Gene Krupper is. He's like the godfather of that shit, yeah? Look at his clip. I always play this when people say to me, who's Gene Krupa? And they start, that, like, when, when say, you know, who's the best guitarist in your opinion? Who's the best singer? Who's the best bassist? Who's the best drummer? I always say, for best drummer of all Without time, a doubt. you have to give a nod to Gene Krupa. Look at this clip, man. From, look at this shit. What year is this? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I keep forgetting. Old. It's old. Considering he died in 67. Yeah. So imagine how old this is. Yeah, just Google it and you'll find it. So he's like a jazz drummer, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Check this out. Intensity, man. He's such a character, man. Sweet dancing. Swinging, daddy. <laughs> yeah. Check this shit out. It goes nuts. Looks exactly like a modern drum kit. Yeah. Pretty sure that's a drum beat for Sandman. <laughs> yeah, they'd rip it off. <laughs> and he holds it to sticks old school style. Yeah. like a drum solo in a concert. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that should be the drummer for Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Sick yeah. 
So what he did, it's still relevant now. Like absolutely, down dude. to a T. Dude, look at drummers now. Yeah. It's exactly how they play. Yeah. Like this is how they play. What an amazing mind, huh? You put two and two together. It's like, hang on a minute, I can do this myself. Like you said. Yeah. Like and said, you know what? And drummers till today, that they have to thank him. Yeah. Yeah, but modernizing, modernizing. modernizing Wouldn't mm. fucking know who this guy is. Yeah. Like literally. We could have had a complete different drum setup. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, exactly. Change the course of music. But he just that just changed it. But yeah. You keep going back, and percussion is just percussion, man. Like you know, beating. Change the course of history. Yeah, pretty and much. And it takes yeah. someone to make yeah. little innovations like that. Yeah. Like, you know, when we talked about the guy, the Japanese dude that created the, um, yeah. the synthesizer. Yeah, the right? synthesizer, yeah. yeah. Uh, Suzuki Tamahapa. You're fucked. Tamagotchi. He's coming up with names. Now, what is his name? <laughs> Suzuki Tamagotchi. Suzuki Tamagotchi. <laughs> brilliant, yeah. brilliant, man. Dude, the guy was from the 30s and 40s, but because of him, you've got trap music now in the South. Yeah. They all implement his sounds, man. Yeah. Just a fucking brilliant mind. But that's what I, that's what shits me the most about these fucking film recreations. It's like knowing how many scriptwriters, screenwriters, directors, producers, actors, books, stories that haven't been told yet are out there. But no, let's make a remake of some Scarface, fucking... Yeah. Let's make a remake of Sex and the City 5, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you imagine that, dude? Can you imagine in 20 years' time they remake Sex and the City movie? The guys. No. Even, <laughs> dude, even with just... The fucking actors, even with women. Yeah. yeah. Why? Like of it, all of the masterpieces out there, I, like would they ever make the Godfather remake the Godfather? I fucking highly doubt it. You can't do that. Man. Exactly, and I I I hold Scarface up there with the Godfather because Scarface was on its own was such a kick ass movie. Like it's not. You can't yeah. just remake that shit, man. I just don't. Just You've given like I think with that movie, like a movie like that, you don't really have all these special effects that need to be done. So that's probably why. No, it's organic. It was organic. Yeah. So you wouldn't, but you know. It, it is what it is. That movie. It, it's you watch Scarface, you think, yeah, man, like that's. But that's it. Yeah, but the reason they remake ones now because they have all the special effects. You know what but I mean? Why would you need laser beams in fucking Scarface? No, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, they yeah, wouldn't yeah, remake yeah. something like that yeah. because you don't need to because if it's just organic, just raw, like. Maybe they remake them because you know they have what? the technology a to make it look better. Yeah, but a lot of the kids now, and like teenagers and all that kind of stuff, if a movie Scarface came out, they would have no idea. They'd think it's just a new a new movie, yeah. which is fucking really shit. And yeah. a lot of the time, the original kills the new ones. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. Like the original that's... Batman, like with Michael Keaton? Dude. It didn't yeah, need was, to be redone. I was, at, I was comparing them the other day, like uh, uh, like all the Batmans and stuff. And like ba- Keaton, who played... Batman, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer. <laughs> Val Kilmer, there you go. circle. Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer. George Clooney. George Clooney, and that was just a piss take. Did yeah. you see the ridiculousness of, like, the whole Arnie thing? When you rewatch that one with George Clooney, they have the most ridiculous sound effects added in. It's like, when they campy. slip over, like, like... Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's completely campy, like it's the 60s Batman with Adam West, who passed away, like, not long ago. Adam West is a sick cunt. Yeah. Adam West. He's got the best um, voice, man. Yeah. Because he do all the family guy stuff. Yeah. Oh. It is cool because he could take the shit out of himself. They told me I couldn't bury sausages. <laughs> well, I proved them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you guys seen the original, original Batman movie? Yeah, the one that Adam with West Adam West. That, that yeah. was the best. I Dude, he had, watching that. he had shark repellent on his belt. Yeah, he it would was spray just a can of spray. The, spray the shark and the shark yeah. just falls off him. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Dude, I had that on a tape with Mary Poppins at the front of it. So, like, Mary Poppins was the first thing, and then Batman, that, that Batman was Would you say it. Sherry Bobbins? <laughs> Sherry Bobbins? <laughs> they're remaking Mary Poppins. Oh, no, they're doing a sequel to Mary Poppins. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Did they ever write a sequel to Mary Poppins? Like, or is it a new concept? I can't, I don't know the answer oh, to look that. Oh, look it up, I don't know, but I remember we spoke about it on, like, episode 52 or something, or... What? That they're doing a sequel? No, no, just how it was, like, a whole drug trip. So yeah, She was forcing the kids to take drugs and have a trip. Yeah, the whole movie was fucked. So, I've never actually watched it, so... The whole movie was fucked. Just fucked. Yeah, man. Just write it off. You never saw Mary Poppins? No, I never saw it. Because I'm not a big fan of musicals. Like, there's a couple that I've let let in, but... Yeah, but we're kids, man. It was unavoidable. It's called Mary Poppins Returns. Is it, oh. is it a true sequel from a book? Mary Poppins 2. Yeah, yeah, but like... But it's uh, was, it origi- was it originally a book or they just write a screenplay based... No, it is, it is the sequel to the 1964 film Mary Poppins. Yeah, but wasn't the f- first film a book? I, I'm just, I okay, think sorry, so. Sorry, but this is set 25 years after the 1964 film. So they've gone 25 years. It will feature Mary Poppins, the former nanny of Jane and Michael Banks, revisiting them after a family tragedy. So what is she, like 106? <laughs> the film is scheduled for release Christmas Day 2018. 106? <laughs> no, she was young in the movie. Like, Julie Andrews was, was young. But so, have you seen The Sound of Music? 
No. I don't think I've ever seen it. That's what I mean. Like, it just yeah, turns me off. Yeah, because the sound of music was just like, oh, for fuck's sakes. Like, for me, if you're growing up in a house where you're watching Hitler docos, and like, yeah, the sound of music is about Nazis, right? But I'm watching Hitler docos, I'm watching Godfather and, you know, Bruce Lee. Yeah. So why would I, why would I have the patience? I watched Mary Poppins because I was very young and my sister was there as well. Yeah. Big like, trouble in little China. <laughs> oh, um, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dude, man. That's, how, and, that's what we grew up watching. Yeah. yeah. That's strange, eh? I've been thinking a lot about that. Like the shit that I did as a kid, it's really strange, man. Like as in more and more childhood shit. I don't mm. know why. Mm. I started going through some of my mystery boxes the way you did the other mm. night. Stalager box. Those mystery boxes, my favorite. I found, um, I always... Takes like, me back to my childhood. I think about what I'm going to do with all that crap, because I've got, like, a box full of, like, Matchbox cars. Keep in your storage, man. Keep it. Yeah, I know, but, like, who's going to want my fucking Matchbox doesn't car? doesn't matter. It's your nostalgia box, man. It's like... Get buried with it. <laughs> with a little Matchbox car? I don't know. I feel funny. I don't want to throw them out. I feel ah, funny. if it means something to you and gives you, like... You look back and you think, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's comforting, it. man. Yeah. I, I don't know. Is it? You know, man, dude, you know I've still got... My drumsticks, right, from year seven. Really? Yeah, man. I've kept them. Because that's my... Yeah, that's, no, but that's my, like... I've got, literally, man, I've got, um, like, all my old comics and shit. I've got, yeah, the, the box full of Matchbox cars, mm. old wrestling figurines. I've got, like, a whole couple of random boxes with, like, yo-yos, cricket balls, um, glasses, watches, old watches. But see, that's cool, because you look back again in another 10 years or 15 years, you're like, oh, yeah, this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not worth anything to anyone but me. That's right. So, it's it's priceless to you. As in, there's no yeah. price that anyone could give you. Yeah, like, they're cool. They're, yeah. Like, Johnny's sex swing. <laughs> his sex swing with a, with a hundred hours <laughs> yeah, on it. Yeah. <laughs> well used. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's when you got to oil it up. Dude, where do you buy a sex swing? Is it on that wish? Yeah, let's have a look. Seriously. I'll find it for you. I swear. I've, I'll be honest, I've never actually seen, other than Amsterdam, I've never actually seen a sex swing in effect. As in like... Imagine being in one. Wow. I don't want to imagine being in one. I just have never seen one actually... I, like I saw it in Amsterdam. Like, yeah. Boom! Wish, 61 bucks. <laughs> Everything. Woman not included. <laughs> Woman and chaps not included. Sex swings. you got to be so precise, right? Where would you fucking Dude, hang it up for? $61 and $17 shipping. You can you can have it here by the September the 4th. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is you just... I get it sent to the, the office. You know when I got the um the business card sent there, it was uh, signed to Duke Leverage. Duke Leverage, yeah. yeah. So I get a sex swing sent there, property of Duke Leverage. <laughs> Dude, that's mad. It's the girls I'm going to laugh at. So just, I'm not really, I'm Very kind cool. of... Sex swing, like, basically, the idea is she swings on to you. There's momentum. You've got the effect of momentum. So you, Can't you just do that yourself, then? Yeah, but not everyone's as ripped in that. Oh, limber. Like limber as me. Yeah, true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> two Un- pumps, understandable. Two pumps, you passed out. <laughs> just pull a hamstring. Ah! No wonder Johnny likes his website, man. <laughs> I might have bought one sex toy off there. What did you buy? Did you let us know? Do you want to know? Yeah, I want to know. Oh. Do I, do I want to know? Actually, no, I'm not no, going to no, it's, it's, it's not that we want to know. We <laughs> have to know. He's all patchwork. <laughs> nah, nah, come For on, man. For the first time ever, he's actually he's pulled his tongue in. Nah, leave him. Is fuck it like I, a flashlight? I, I don't want to know. It yeah, is, fuck it, it, I'm not going to say it. No, nah, I don't want to know. No, nah, it's not a flashlight. Yeah, it probably is. He bought himself anal beads. <laughs> flashlight, heavy-duty flashlight with it's heavy a, uh, claws. It's, it's, an, it's an attachment to the rod. <laughs> okay, so what'd you buy? Like one of those vibrating fucking things again? Yeah, it's sort of like a cock ring, but a bit different. It goes up the other end. Yeah, it's... A, it's, a, it's Instead of being at the base, it's at the end. Yeah, dude, it's like an extra three inches. No, nah, it's <laughs> not. Like malleable... It's not. Latex to nah, make nah. teeth. It's not. It's like... <laughs> oh, you've gone this deep now. Yeah. Part of the pun. No turning back. <laughs> no turning back. <laughs> No, no, honestly, honestly, what is it? Picture like a, a, picture a silicon knob yeah. with like a tight base around it. Yeah. So what does that do? Does it stop the blood flow from... Yeah, it restricts like around the around the top. Yeah. And it's meant to prolong. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not, he doesn't... Not, not, not comfortable at no. all. At all. Not recommended. One, yeah. one star rating from Bobby on that one. <laughs> How much do you pay for it? Free. <laughs> <laughs> How much? Two dollar postage? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well... Nothing the... that cheap could be good, dude. Seriously. <laughs> Wasn't pleasant. Nah, man. Kind of hurt. He put that on while it was exfoliating. <laughs> that, that black tar stuff. 
<laughs> His face just went Not Whoa. far off, but not far yeah. off. You're disgusting, man. Can we move on from the sex toys, please? Yes. It's just, yeah, I don't really like it. You know what? <laughs> Dude, I'm just going to say this, man. Have you seen, I'm going back to Charlottesville. Um, have you seen what's going on with North Korea? Guam and stuff? Yeah, Guam, right? They're at choke point. Yeah, but uh, he just... Uh, Kim Jong fuckwit, whatever his name is, he goes, <laughs> he just goes, oh, we're going to back off Guam just for a little bit. When it, his comment was, quote, unquote, was, let's see what those stupid Yankees do next. Nothing. It's it's Kim Jong Un that's amping yeah. up the yeah. like the. Didn't he say as well he could like destroy all of America? Yeah, he can't destroy anything. He, he can it's hit big, Guam. It's big place. He, he can hit Guam. That's about it. That's the thing, man. Look, this is what I love. What Trump said about it. He's like, we'll wait and see what happens with Guam, and then. Yeah. It's like, no, let's stop it now before something happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that, I remember I was reading about the, not the backlash, but I was reading about... I'd hate reading, to be living on Guam right now. Dude, I was reading into <laughs> it. Just every day. Just. And they're saying, they're saying it's sort of like a double-edged thing, like as in, it could blow up in Trump's face, pardon the pun, because they've got, you know, they've got the um, anti-missile defense systems, right? If they fail and don't stop the missile from Korea to Guam... Bye-bye. Then the whole... American defense system is in jeopardy. Mm. Like, they, they lose face. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, you couldn't stop one fucking... Like, we've never had to use the system. And now, when we've had to use the system and it's failed, your, your that, that's integrity, gone. Yeah, yeah, your credibility just drops, like, tenfold. Your stock would plummet, yeah. right? But this is what I got, like, from from Charlottesville, right? Uh, Kim K came out telling people to back off this other racist blogger, right? Vlog, at least makeup dude. Singer makeup, gay singer makeup. He's got like a racist past. Kim K came out saying, you know, um, can we just put the negativity behind us and blah, blah, blah. And all these African Americans came out saying, are you out of your fucking mind? Like, you know, racism isn't just negative negativity. It's fucking wrong. Like, there's a difference between negative and being like, okay, do you want it's like, it's like comparing like, um, like child, if you said it about uh, pedophilia, right? It's like there's something that's, being negative, like, you know, you've got a bad attitude about shit, you know, don't be negative, and then there's just being outright wrong, like, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be fucking happening. Like, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Anyway, then Kim K was forced to retract all this shit, just created this whole social media fucking cyclone. This is what I woke up to this morning. I had no idea about mm. it. I was lying in bed just looking through um, the news feed or whatever, and this was coming up. Kim K forced to retract comments to some racist thing, and then that tied into, like, Trump and his Charlottesville address, and then it tied into North Korea, right? The whole time, do you know what I thought of? What's going on in Syria right now? Weren't no they meant to no be, one knows. Weren't they meant to be like fucking choking point? Like mm-hmm. uh, ISIS was nearly taken out of Iraq. It's just a memory of the past now. Yeah, it's like ISIL nothing. was nearly finished in Iraq. I'm like, what? The, I read that like a two, three weeks ago. What happened to that? Yeah, what's ISIS doing right now? What yeah. are they planning? Because I remember reading a headline about a week or two ago saying Assad, uh, like the United Nations or someone, some you know, governing entity, has got enough evidence against the Saad to take him to cr- uh, trial now for war crimes. Yeah, you know, like the the whole chemical weapon shit and like all the other crimes against humanity, all the horrible stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I read it somewhere. I can't remember where it was. I saw it online, or maybe I saw it on the news. And I'm like, just a little footnote yeah, somewhere. <laughs> I, I swear to God. Yeah. And little... I thought to myself, I got to jot that down. I remember, like, maybe I saw it, you know, at work, and I said, oh, I'll look at it later, you know, when I finish work or something. I didn't see anything on the news about it. Yeah. This. Dude, but even Kim Jong pointing nukes is just full, like no, gone to the way, gone to the wayside. Charlottesville has taken center stage, which is so dumb. Like, yeah. why the fuck are we fighting with each other over this trivial shit when there's like really important shit happening? D- like, like hiding in plain sight. Yeah. What happened to ISIL? What happened to ISIS? Are they all just gone? Like, are they no longer relevant in the news? <laughs> and then I thought about it, and I'm like, hang on, is Coney still floating around? <laughs> still, know? still at large. Yeah. Like, do you Let's know what have I mean? a look. Yeah. Yeah. What was his name? Coney. No, was his first name? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Something Coney. K O N Y. Just look up that. It should come up. But do you understand what I'm saying? I'm like, how are these all? Are these all just not relevant anymore? Like, what happened to all that, man? We're talking about it. it. What comes up? Coney 2012. <laughs> yeah, that, that's when the the fucking big meme shit came out. See, in my opinion, they shouldn't be paying so much attention to this riot stuff. Like, obviously, take care of it, but don't just plaster it and cover up everything else because it's yeah. not. Like, like there's, ra- bigger, there's bigger things. Dude, that, racism like, is everywhere. It's not just in the United States. Yeah. It's fucking everywhere. Like Joseph Coney. Dude, we we had the Rise Up Australia riots here. You know, like all the. 
nationalists in, in Australia. I'd rather focus on the impending nukes that are going to be fired at us, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, like, just really make... Like, that's really important. That's going to kill a lot more yeah. lives Am than I a riot. Wrong? Like, no, I, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, hang on. I was reading about Assad and ISIL, like, the end of ISIL, uh, ISIL's presence in Iraq. Like, they literally cornered them, and they were just flushing out the last of the, the riffraff. I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's massive. And then Assad's going to be brought to, to trial? Like, Jesus, like... Two, President of Syria just gets thrown out? Two words, Jim. Fake news, baby. Yeah. Fake news. I can give you an update on Kony. Okay. May 1st, 2017. So quite recent. Relevant. <laughs> Uganda and the Isn't US... Isn't that our birthday? What? May 1st. Oh, May 1st. No. Uh, May 18th. Yeah, May 18th. Um, Uganda and the US have ended a six-year hunt for the fugitive warlord Joseph Kony. Why? Just giving up. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. But it sparked fears that the Lord's Resistance Army will regroup and come back. <laughs> The Lord's Resistance Army. So there's going to be a new thing, Coney 19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Lord's Resistance Army, man. How fucked up is that? Even Coney is more important than these stupid, like... Yeah, rednecks with tiki torches. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like the most important fucking thing at the moment, but it's not. Yeah. It really isn't. Of all the of all the shit that's going down... Oh, and that, that brought up the speech in Collateral. You know the one that you were talking about? Yeah. By Tom Cruise? Yeah. How he's justifying the dude that he killed... To the Rwandan genocide. Yeah, and, and and he's like, you know, that's in Rwanda. Like, you know, what the fuck do I know about Rwanda? He's like, well, what did you know about the guy that just got mm, killed? Mm. And, and Jamie Foxx is stunned. He's like, doesn't know what to say. Yep. It's a, it's a truth. Like, perfect, perfect point, yeah. Tom Cruise killed it with that, like, oh, not Tom Cruise, like the writer. Whoever did. wrote it, yeah. Yeah, and Tom Cruise delivered it perfectly. Just good writing. It's like, do you give a fuck that kids are getting wiped out in Rwanda every fucking day? No. So why do you give a shit about some drug dealer or some pimp or some peddler? Did you know him? No. Well, what's it to you? Yeah. What's it fucking to you? Yeah. It's man, nail on the fucking head. But it's the truth. Like all that sort of shit. Like I, I force myself to try and remember. Well, yeah. What? What is going on with Assad? Like I saw him in the news, but then all of a sudden, these white nationalists in Charlottesville with tiki torches are the most important people on the planet. They wouldn't get the fucking airtime anywhere else on the planet. They'd be like, "Who the fuck are you, man?" Mm-hmm. I mean, in height, like in. Yeah, like, it's not that important, really, when you look at it compared to other issues, is it? Like, no. it's just a bunch of people... Like, it's bad, but it's just a riot in the street. Yeah. Like, it's not... <laughs> yeah. Look like a frat party, man. Tiki torch party. Dude, There's... they're fucking losers, man. Yeah, bad. Michael Rappaport said it best. You are fucking losers. You're and in college. They're getting the most attention on the planet right you're now. You're 19, 20 years old. But go out and try and get laid. On a Friday night, and the best thing you could think of to do was get dressed in your skinny jeans and your polos with your parted hair... Trying to look hard and gangster in Charlottesville, North Carolina. Like, like, go, go get roots and have fun. Dude, like, really? Like, yeah. Really? Trump brought up a thing and he said, um, if we're going to get rid of that statue, do we have. He said it in his address, his last one. That About the said. presidents. Yeah. yeah. Do we have to get rid of all George Washington um, statues? And Jefferson. And Jefferson. They, 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 were were, they were slave owners. They were slave owners, but they were the forefathers of American independence and la 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 la. Do we get rid of them? How do you see. Like, what do you guys think as far as. Is it a comparison or, like, chalk and cheese? You know what I mean? No, a yeah, comparison. I think you just get rid of Trump. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you. Because is it... Look, the difference is, is Lee was trying to keep slavery and secede, like, the mm. southern states because they were, like, literally just rednecks. Washington was from another era, like, trying to push... Like, yeah, yeah the, I know what you the, mean. The American yeah. Constitution. Like, does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, it is different, but... He was probably still a tyrant at the same time. Oh, and, like, of course he did a horrible shit. No doubt, yeah. yeah. It's sort of weird. Like, but they both had. They were both products of their environment. Mm-hmm. But they both had. They had different agendas. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Like Lincoln freed the slaves. Yeah. Lincoln freed the slaves when the South was still trying to retain slavery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So Lincoln was pushing the new direction, and the South was still trying to keep the old fucking yeah old system. way. Yeah. So, like, you can be a product of your environment because you've got no way out or just that's all you know. But then when you fucking jerry, it's not like a, fl- a switch is just flicked and... Do, like, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know. Like, maybe I'm, I'm just babbling. I, I don't know. Well, yeah, people make mistakes and they change and they can see the errors of their ways and yeah. whatever, so... But obviously this Lee guy didn't. He was just like... No, he, no, he had anti-black. one agenda and he... White power. That, yeah. That was it. Yeah. And they're still doing it now. Like, they're still trying to push the South to secede from the... Let it go. Like, you can't just fuck. fuck off. Yeah. 
It's like with the Brexit, uh, you know, with the uh, Quexit, uh, we wanted Queensland oh, yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, Quexit. Like, yeah, be your own state. We don't, be your own fucking country. We don't care. Fuck off. <laughs> but it's the same thing, dude. Like, the rest of Australia is looking at Pauline Hanson and One Nation. It's like, you cunts are fucked. Yeah. Like, we don't agree with any of that. The, no one in Australia agrees with that. No. Like, we, we look at it, we're like, you, you people are fucking... Except fucked. for the people in Wollongabba. Yeah. Wollongabba. Wollongabba, yeah. Wollongabba. Do you want to be associated with Wall. people like that? Because every time the world looks at us, <laughs> we get associated with those fucking rednecks. Yeah. Straight yeah. away, oh, she's Australian, oh, so all Australians must We're be all, like... Yeah, like I said, I copped it in Bangkok ba- that, like Backwards idiots. Yeah. 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 I copped it in Bangkok when that, that black South African girl said to me, all Australians are racist. I'm like, but what? I'm not racist and I'm Australian. Yeah. But it's just whatever the majority... Yeah. Media fucking pushes. Yeah, yeah. fake news. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you see the? Oh, that's the other thing that pissed me off. That's why I started thinking about Assad. Um, Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth is uh, setting to what's it called? Uh, abdicate the throne. throne. Yeah, to, to, to Willie uh, Charles. Oh, yeah, Char- Charles. Charlesy. Charles, you watch. <laughs> Big ears, Charles. I don't want this to happen, right? But something's going to happen to Charles. And we'll, be, we'll become the king. Watch this space. You heard it here first that that's not right. Oh, Tromlin with the inside scoop. <laughs> he, he does South, love the royals and what they're... South Melbourne <laughs> in between four walls of carpet. You know what I mean? <laughs> and put it on our wall. Nah, Tromlin does love the royals. He's right into it. You're watch, the, watch this space. You reckon? Something will happen to him. He won't be king. What, like an assassination? I'm not saying from that. Will, slips, from... slips and falls in his bath. <laughs> Dude, the guy's on the sex swing with Camilla. (laughs) (laughs) He's on wish. He's he's trying to order a sex (laughs) swing. Just the anonymity. (laughs) Takes on a dildo and dies. Oh, dude, Please he's, out. His, account, <laughs> his account on Wish is Charlie King yeah. one one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Charlie boy, <laughs> King Charlie, King Charles. I think it's Charlie Sheen. It's yeah. actually Prince Charles. It's like a <laughs> King Charlie sixty nine. Yeah. So, TMZ, TMZ get wind of someone <laughs> called King Charlie on Wish ordering sex swings. And they think it's Charlie Sheen. And they, they get to his house and try to interview him. They look at him and it's it's Prince Charles. <laughs> but we've been over this. Do we really need royals, like, in this really. day and age? Oh, like, really. what do you do? Sit there in your rich fucking... No, but, but the thing, you never get rid of them, because it's part of the English way. It's your brother and... I don't care. But it's that's stupid. what I was reading, dude. I, yeah, Rape yeah, and pillage their way to Philip, power, and then they've never left. Yeah. Prince Philip finally fucking retired from, you know... At 98, at, uh, yeah, whatever he is. Public fucking... Speaking. Yeah. Appearances. It's like, oh, he's retired. I remember seeing an apor- a report on it. Maybe I was at work or so something. They called the 3am meeting for it. Yeah. Like they had a big fucking there thing. There was a report. Oh, has, has, has he died? Has he... No, he just retired. Yeah. Okay. Like, he I didn't remember, do anything in the first place. Yeah, mm. the, the fucking... I was at work. I was walking past the TV, and it said, oh, Prince Philip has retired from public service. He's served his country for 65-odd years or whatever. I'm like, doing what? Walked around and said racist shit. Walked around, said racist, ignorant shit, and ate on tax dollar, taxpayer yeah. money. Yeah. What else has he done? Had mistresses. Had... Dude, what has he done? I don't know. He has not worked a day in his life. Yeah. I mean, look. And right that's right. where I, I laughed because I'm like, what? he's retiring. Retiring from what? I actually looked up like um, a young Prince Philip pictures. Yeah. And it's always just him standing there, like posing, like. Yeah, because he, some... he was a fucking. Yeah, he was an entitled little and, just, and walking through villages, like, yeah. little, you know. Yeah, and then... Looking down on villages. Queen Elizabeth is making note of her advanced age and wants to be able to serve her country till... Like, she wants to be, um, effectively serve her country, the people, and then when she knows she's past it... She wants to go out on a high. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're 95. What do you do anyway? What do you do? What does she fucking do? You're 95. Prince Charles, the poor bastard, he's been waiting for 60 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? When's that old bass going to die? Yeah, I guarantee he's got voodoo dolls in his house of his fucking mother. Like, just taking the legs out, just trying to make her a mobile. Or he gets, like, little, he makes shivs around yeah. the house, and yeah. he hides them. Every time she walks past, <laughs> just fucking... <laughs> Puts little bits of plastic in her suit. Praying, yeah. Yeah. she'll choke. Yeah. Praying that the fucking non-slip mat in her bathtub and the handle on the door, on the fucking wall of the shower... Gives way. Just gives way, and she, like, ends up, you know, breaking a knee. And it's like, oh, I've got to retire now. Excellent. Yeah. Prince Charles would just be like, a little like a durry up, like, <laughs> man, yeah, finally I can step up. Yeah. But step up to what? Night people? Like, I don't yeah, get it. Yeah, night people and look, stand there and look important and do what? I don't know. They, they serve no fucking purpose. Sit in your Buckingham Palace and... Why are we back on the fucking royal? Ah. You know what's bad? I love, I love the start of his fucking bio, man. A, Who, member, of that, yeah, a, a member of the House of Schwing... 
Holsten, Sonnenberg, fucking whatever. Philip was born into the Greek and Danish royal family. He was born in Greece, but his family was exiled from the country when he was an infant. Even the Greeks were like, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Fuck off. Yeah, the Hunda was in at that time, yeah. I'm pretty sure, man. Yeah. I could sense the devil baby straight away. The devil baby. <laughs> the devil Get him baby. out. <laughs> but he's just, you know, the priceless racism of the Duke of Edinburgh. Prince Philip has done the world an extraordinary service by exposing the racist hypocrisy. Um, I'm pretty racist. sure he's a fucking racist Dude, and womanizer. You, you, can and- look, you can look up all the shit he said, like all the most heinous shit that he said about like races and stuff. It's hilarious. It just goes on and on and on. Yeah, he's just outright ignorant. Outright ignorant. That's what you'd expect from a guy that's like nearly a hundred years old. He is. He's nearly a hundred, man. Yeah, old starchy English. Yeah, an old starchy English guy. He's nearly a hundred. Out of touch completely. Out of touch. Dude, think of, man. I think I'm out of touch half the time with like when I see new shit out. Yeah, you know, like when a new celebrity pops up, and I'm like, who the fuck is that? Like, what the hell is that? Like, I, I got no idea. I'm in my thirties. This guy. What year was he born in? Uh, twenties. This guy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he was born in uh, 21. 21? Dude, World War broke out in like 37. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the first. <laughs> Dude, it was 21, right? Yeah. So he would have been in his fucking 20s when World War was... Uh, what was he doing in his 20s? Was he slaving? dick. Walking yeah, around. Yeah, walking yeah. around. He, was in the, he was in the military. He was in the uh, Royal Navy, the British Army, and the Royal Air Force. Yeah. So years of service, 1939 to 52. So yeah. he was there for about 13 years. I bet he did dick, Rank, though. Admiral of Fleet, Field Marshal, and Marshal of the Royal Air Force. But he was a Royal, he was a royal member there. Yeah. It's not like he would have been on the front lines with a fucking Beretta. Like nah, he, he would have just been you know commanding. What? You know what? That's one thing I give Harry fucking yeah, respect he was for. In Afghanistan. That motherfucker went in, man, front line. He actually went in and fought. Yeah. He actually did it. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying. Philip, Harry doesn't give a fuck. Philip, Philip wouldn't have been a fucking, um, what's it called? The, yeah, the grunts. Yeah. The Aussies that copped it, running up in Gallipoli. Yeah. The, um, what are they called? Bands like the diggers. diggers. Yeah, the diggers. Yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't have been in the trenches running. No. With a fucking handheld Luger. You know what I mean? He wouldn't have dirt, dirt under his nails. No way. <laughs> I'll tell you that's what. Right. <laughs> the battles on wars he's been involved in is the Battle of Crete back in the day. When yeah. It, the Battle of Cape Matapan. But that's what I'm saying, man. Like, he was still a royal at that point. Battle of Okinawa. <laughs> You're telling me that they didn't look after him then? Of course they did. But that, that's what I'm saying. He would have come out of World War II, burnt out, like, eh, I'm done. Married royal blood again. He was, he was already royal. They got fed grapes. Just, you yeah. know what? Because he's already royal blood, obviously royal marries a royal. That's yeah. It, that's it. And he knew. As soon as he married Elizabeth, man, he knew he was set. Yeah. He but knew. that's what I'm saying, man. Like, there's a difference between royalty and career politicians and world leaders like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, how many politicians and world leaders, like Duterte from fucking the Philippines, mm. look up his background. That guy's, man. It wasn't royalty. No. You know, he started to work. Yeah. Fucking, um, what's his name? Manny Pacquiao, man. Dude, yeah. World-class boxer, right? One of the best of the world. Uh, can't, he's, he's a basketball. He actually is the, one of the f- most... Manny. Yeah, yeah. He coached a women's league team, but he actually played in, like, a Filipino league. No shit. Like, across mm. sports, he, he holds some stupid record. He wouldn't want to fail him, man. Just sit there yeah. and jab you. Like, yeah. <laughs> but he's a senator now, <laughs> yeah. right? So he's lining up for... He's in government. He's not lining up. He is in government. Yeah. And he was born in the streets. Yeah, he grew up in he poverty, He got into man. fighting because he was trying to survive. Like, mm. do you, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's this epic story. Philip was born... The silver spoon in, in royalty. Mouth. <laughs> yeah. Fucking drank some mm-hmm. pina coladas and mai tais, and then married, married Elizabeth, and Elizabeth, and that's more or less it. And became his, and then became his side bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're a houseboy, oh, you're right? A houseboy, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's a, he is the epitome of a houseboy. Yeah, he is a houseboy. Do you want to hear some racist stuff he said? Who? Uh, Philip. Phil, yeah. <laughs> if you stay here much longer, you will go home with slitty eyes. Said <laughs> said to a British student in China in 1986. Oh See, that's my fucked. God. More. There's one that he said about Aborigines in Australia. That that was like the killer. It was stupid. Philip. I don't know. There's so many here. I just got to sift through it. Pick pick one. Like, watch uh, Prince Philip. If you just look up Prince Six Philip, six million comments. ways to die. Choose one. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Prince. He bags the Scottish out a lot. <laughs> of course he does. He hates him, man. Because he mean? hates him. The English hate the Scottish. Scotland tried to get oh, out of the fucking. Put out this one. You are a woman, aren't you? Said to a Kenyan woman, Kenyan woman in 1994 at an award ceremony. 
That's like, disgusting. Like, you are a woman, right? Like, a, like and he's probably genuine. Yeah. Like, he's probably genuine. Yeah. Like, that's how he fucked is. up he is. Dude, Prince Philip on how to offend Australia's Aborigines. Yeah? Look at this photo of him standing there staring, man. <laughs> look at him. Cuts just b- b- baffled, man. <laughs> Bamboozled. <Yeah. laughs> hey, look at this, what he said when, when he was asked to pat... <laughs> Bamboozled. <laughs> Dude, he was, asked, he was asked to pat a koala in 1992, and this is what he said. Oh, no, I might catch a ghastly disease. He's a fucking disease. What oh a just God. coddled p- loser. I'm pretty sure he's already got chlamydia. Dude, <laughs> in 2002, in a, during a visit at the Aboriginal Cultural Park in Queensland, Australia, he asked, he asked successful Aboriginal businessman William Brin, do you still throw spears at each other? Oh, my God. Once again, Buckingham Palace was left to clean up the mess. They were light-hearted comments, a spokesman said. There was no offence intended. No offence intended if you're asking a black guy if they throw spears at each other. Dude, there's a picture here, like, looking at Aboriginals, try, like, making fire, like, just out of sticks. <laughs> oh, here we go. And he just looks so disgusting. Like, he's just like... Like, just look at that. Like Neanderthal. Like, like, yeah, I think that's the one I just showed you. Yeah, it is, it is. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, what are they doing? It's like, dude... Where's my tea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How uncivilised... Like, dude, they, they made fire, like... <laughs> Without them, you wouldn't have fire, you son of a bitch. Like, they, they knew how to survive before anyone else. That's what I'm saying about the royals. Like, why? Gather hunt, hunter-gatherers, mate. They knew exactly what was going on. Old racists, and they're still just cruising around... Yeah. You think living the high life. But see, the, like, now we're getting into the new age, and I know no one really wants royals and stuff, but Harry's changed the perception of a royal, and so is Will, to an extent. Oh, you like, fall, you fall in for their boyish charms. Silly. Yeah, boyish, boyish yeah, that charms. rosy red cheeks. New, and the new, fucking... newbie mistake right there. <laughs> boyish charms. Will got him. Will got him with his charms. Boyish, they're in their mid-30s now, man. Yeah, Dude. Still. But I'm saying, they're not those snooty old pricks. Yeah, they're more in touch. They're not, them. exactly. Well, they're not they figured out pricks. what they had to do to survive. Yeah. Dude, Harry's rolling around the Caribbean and yachts just slanging box, man. Like... Uh, now he's engaged. That was the big news. Oh, to a non... To, Run, to, yeah, a, to a, a, to a commoner. commoner. Yeah. How dare he? And he was always, like, not really part of the whole scene of the royals, man. Like, he... Bad boy. Shit, yeah. The black sheep of the royals, if you will. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs>